runs. We've got Anthony Caliber with The Last of Us. Take it away. All right. Hello, everyone. I am Anthony Caliber. And I'm Dino Thalastophus, or The Last of Us, if you want to pronounce it properly. There's Dino. And for the first time ever at Gamestone Quick, very excited about this. This is The Last of Us. So here we go, right off the bat. New game, grounded. We're gonna be doing grounded mode and glitchless. There is a 90% category, but we're gonna be doing glitchless. And just in case the game crashes, I'm gonna make this under a save file. All right, here we go. So. Last of Us. Uh, game came out in 2013 on the PlayStation 3 and was remastered about a year later on the PlayStation 4. This is the version we're doing, uh, re remastered. Frame rate's upgraded from 30 to 60, so it's uh, a lot easier to control. And again, we're doing this on Grounded, which is the hardest of the five difficulties. Uh, funny enough, if you wanted to play Grounded on PlayStation 3, you actually have to buy this difficulty because it's technically DLC. And keep this in your memory. Because it's DLC, there, is, there are some side effects to ground it, but we'll go over that a little bit later. Okay, timer starts when we skip the first cutscene. Just gotta wait for these loading screens. Here we go. Okay. So timer starts in three, two, one, go. Okay, so this is Sarah. Uh, she's the 12 year old daughter of a single parent called Joel. Um, in the opening cutscene, the one that we just missed, uh, she stayed awake to give her dad his birthday present, a watch. Uh, she eventually falls asleep, Joel carries her up to her bed, moves a lock of hair that's falling over, uh, fallen over her face, and says, good night, baby girl. I'm just mentioning that because it will be said again, but for now, we're, we're playing a walking sim. But yeah, don't blink, or you're gonna miss all this crazy speedrunning action. Just look how fast we're going. Triangle prompt hit. Dad? Left foot, right foot, left foot, so fast. Daddy? Turn that right corner. Now we gotta walk down some stairs. Left turn. A new, ex a new experience for all of us. <laughs> so immersive. All right. The game, okay. Take it from me, the game does get off to a bit of a slow start, but once we hit around 19 minutes, you know, the game starts to really pick up. Then I love this game. Just in general and as a speed run. All right, Dino, what's happening here? Sarah, are you okay? Well, we're about to meet Jimmy, uh, albeit briefly. Jimmy will come in here. Uh, but as you probably heard from the telephone Don't conversation, the something Just rather nasty is going down Dad, in the town of Austin, in, in Texas. I can't do the accents. <laughs> something right with him, I think. Um, there is a little, not a collectible, but a little artifact in the kitchen. Uh, from Dad? her uncle Tommy. One of the, he's left a message on Joel's phone to say that he's on his way. Some people have said, oh, how convenient Jimmy, that Tommy should turn up now. Uh, Jimmy was a real one. That's a shame. Yeah. And his actual name is Jimmy Cooper, apparently. So if anybody can do... Yeah, if anybody could do the Jimmy Cooper, well, yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> Okay, so what, what was that thing? What happened to Jimmy? Right, well, the game, a lot of people uh, talk about zombies. They think this is a zombie apocalypse game. Uh, but no, 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 never, knew, never use the word zombie. Uh, we're talking about infected. There is a real world. Uh, fungal infection called cordyceps. Now, thankfully, it only affects ants, but not, not this me. ant that you <laughs> in the corner. No, 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 not him. Yeah, sure thing. Um, the game is based on um, a mutation of that, which is affecting humans in the same way. It takes over the brain, makes them highly aggressive, cannibalistic, not nice. Uh, and there are four stages of that infection, but we'll meet those a little bit later. Right now, it's just with runners. Okay, and this is the day of, like, the outbreak across the entire world. Which... Oh, which, incidentally, is set in present day. In other words, 2013, when the game yeah, came out. Yeah, the game came out in June 2013, but the outbreak is September 20-something, 2013. 
They got no I can never remember whether it's 26th or 29th. I'm going to say 26th. Or it might, might have been the 24th. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I forget. It's okay. I just run this game every day. Um, okay. So, like I said, we're doing this on grounded difficulty. The hardest of the five. Now, grounded is... It's really brutal. Um, it's it's the closest thing there is to dying in one hit. The description of grounded is enemies do triple damage. A rifle bullet will leave you with, like, that much health. A revolver will kill you in two hits. A pistol will kill you in three hits. Three punches as well. A melee weapon hit will pretty much kill you in one hit because they combo their attacks. Um... And uh, crafting ingredients. Throughout the game, you pick up crafting ingredients to, let's see, blades, binding, rags, alcohol, explosives, and sugar to craft shivs, molotovs, medkits, smoke bombs, and nail bombs. Um, and a, a lot of those ingredients are shared, so you have to be really careful about what you choose to use them for. Mm -hmm. Yep, like uh, a molotov and a medkit require the same crafting ingredients. <clears throat> um, now... On easy mode, there could be a table with, like, whole ingredients of crafting materials. There could be, like, a whole thing of a bunch of stuff. But on grounded, there may be a quarter of one of those things or nothing at all. Resources are very scarce. There's also supplements and parts which you can use to upgrade Joel, like his listen mode, his healing and crafting speed, or use the parts to upgrade uh, Joel's weapons. Now, in this game, we pick up 50 supplements to upgrade his weapon sway and 96 parts to upgrade right holster and clip capacity in the rifle, but that's later. Um, Uh-oh. No, it's okay. They're fine. That, did, <coughs> that didn't end well. Um, oh, another thing. Uh, the you, One of the unique things about the grounded mode is the lack of a HUD. And Anthony, yes. Yeah, the, <laughs> on the bottom right, on easy, normal, hard, and survivor, all of the... Uh, hold on. On easy, normal, hard, and survivor, the heads-up display on the bottom right is there, but on grounded, it's automatically turned off. Uh, so you don't know how much health you have, you don't know how many bullets are in a magazine, uh, you don't know how many hits you have left with a melee weapon or how many shivs you have. You can use the... Oh, this guy's not being very friendly. He's not social distancing. There we go, Tommy. Um, let's see. But the one thing that is consistent regardless of difficulty is the fact that the townsfolk of Austin do not know how to run. They are like two-year-olds. No, it's like their shoela their left shoelaces and their right shoelaces are tied together or something. Up, oh, down goes one. This guy, this guy, really struggling here. Now, all these people are random every single time, but Tommy is consistent every time. I know exactly where he's going to be, so we need him to push us. Up, oh, down goes another. Come on, Tommy. Tommy, there you are. Up, oh, this guy. Must be his first day in Boston. We're gonna get out of this. Just looking around. Now, unlike unlike the townsfolk, um, Tommy has a hitbox which will push you. The townsfolk develop a hitbox after they've glitched through you and they stop you dead. So you really don't want one, one of them to be right in front of you. You can't run through him. Yep. Oh, also, QTE prompts are disabled on Grounded, so if you're playing Grounded for the first time, you would have no clue that you have to mash square to get this one off you. Okay, so we we think we're about to escape the chaos, but in the cutscene that's coming up, uh, Joel gets stopped by a soldier who's been given instructions, like the rest of the military, to not let anybody leave the town. The soldier opens fire, but Tommy, as he's promised here, um, arrives in time to kill him. Daddy, Unfortunately and tragically, He's gonna be big fine. tears, uh, Sarah was hit there. and died in Joel's arms. And that is going to be the end of 2013, and we will jump ahead 20 years. 
Oh, you know, before I was talking about the um, the infected, how they, they become very, very aggressive with hardly any brain function. So, 20 years later, the military, <coughs> sorry, um, are now in control of the few quarantine zones that still uh, that are still operating. This lady here is Tess. The soldiers are supposed to handle the outside. Um, and this is Boston. Yep, we're in a quarantine uh, zone in Boston. Now, we're, we're obviously going to skip all the cutscenes, but what I did there after the cutscene was a restart encounter. And the restart encounter does a lot of different things throughout this run. Uh, what it did there was it skipped the camera panning down and showing uh, Joel and Tess leaving the building, which saves like 17 seconds. Sometimes it like skips in-game cinematics. Sometimes it places you and your companions further. Um, and it does other stuff throughout the run. But we'll. Um, get we to are that on later. a mission. We're on, we're on a mission at the moment. We are looking for a a contact, uh, an arms dealer, or just another smuggler, called Robert, who owed Tess and or Joel and Tess had paid for a shipment of arms from, and they've not turned up. Worse than that, Robert actually sent a couple of goons to try to kill Tess. So we're going to go and find him now. We know where he is. Tess knows where he is, so we're going to go and find him and uh, uh, renegotiate. Yes, use their words and nothing else. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> that is a very functioning truck. It'd be a shame if something happened to it. Oh. Mm. Darn. Oops. Whoopsie. <laughs> That's our first. That is our first meeting of the Fireflies. But more about those uh, shortly. Yep, this is the tutorial part right now. Joel doesn't know how to throw a bottle, open a door, quick turn, or heal yet. 20 years, but today's the day he's finally going to learn all these things. It has to happen eventually. <laughs> can't put it off, for, can't put it off forever. Yep, right here, you can't, uh, you can't move until you heal. X up R1. There we go. Okay. Uh... Okay, yeah. the famous hallway push. Will we get it? I don't know. There's something that normally you have to stand behind Tess walk. and this guy. Or we could just let Robert go. Um, Cute. But hey, Tess, you see if you shit? walk the right there. way, hey, you can get to the left of him and get in front of him, and sometimes you can boost it. you down this no entire controls. hallway. Where are you off to? We'll Gotta see if we get it. it. You gotta you slowly too. inch your way uh, to Marlene. the left. She's been asking around, trying to find him. Think she'd tell me the truth. This is a case of threading the eye of a needle, and sometimes, even if you get it right, it still won't work. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get it. It's it's oh. random. Sometimes he can just send you launching down the entire hallway. Oh well. Which is allowed in the glitchless category. There's a lot of sketchy things that are allowed in the glitchless category, but that's really because when you play this game fast, it is. Quite broken, unfortunately. I love this game to death, but it's pretty broken yes. when you try and play it fast. Hey, things guys. can happen without you, like, intentionally Shit's wanting to do it. So we allow certain here. things. Uh, it's been quiet. Uh, yes. Um, it's whenever you uh, do a run and it's called glitchless, there's always going to be a few things that happen. And pe I know what, Joel, what will happen in chat. This. People will say, oh, that's a glitch, surely. All we can say on that is that when it comes to the strats that we think might look a little bit sketchy, um, they are put to a panel of speedrun.com mods, and they make a decision on what is allowed. So anything that you see in this game, and you think it looks a little bit dodgy, and is simply playing by the rules. Let's grab yeah. our gear. Everything has been agreed. Yeah, it may not look like it, but we allow a lot of things because it can either happen without you intending to, uh, by accident, because an area can soft lock or, or stuff like that. For example, there's a section later on in the high school where once you kill all the enemies, you can restart encounter and get all your supplies back. The reason we allow it is because, um, why do we allow that again? Right, because if you hit the triangle prompt for the door too early, you actually soft lock the area. And the only way out would be to restart encounter. So stuff right, like that. Texas. Boost me up. Okay, let's see. Is there anything about ground that I left out? Oh, yes. Big important one. Your guns actually do more damage compared to the other difficulties to compensate for grounded being really, really difficult. Come on. Um, 
For example, the pistol on easy, normal, hard, and survivor will down an enemy in three hits. Uh, revolver and the rifle will down in two hits. Now, on grounded mode, a pistol will down in two hits, and the rifle and revolver will down in one hit. Be careful. What am I not? Also, you're seeing that I'm crouch walking here because sometimes the game will force you to walk. Even if you're holding down sprint, you can't run or Where's sprint. So in those cases, somewhere. we want to crouch walk because crouch walking is faster than walking for some right, reason. Bring it over. And we can't bunny hop. No, n no it's jumping. Game. That's a sequel thing. <laughs> Shh, don't mention the sequel. Right, right. This is Last of Us 1. First. Okay, here comes a restart <laughs> encounter, which saves all of one of second. And top of the ladder. Stuff like that. Stuff like that really adds up over the course of Down what I hope here. is around two hours and 52 minutes. I'd be happy with that. You never you know, though. Still got our guns? That's why I put an estimate of three out. The record is two hours and 49 minutes. Be easy to Hold up. But three-hour estimate. You never know. Hell are all these coming from? This is grounded. Is clear last there are some things in this game where, you know, if I don't have the right amount of supplies or the right amount of health, not only can I not do a section fast, I can't do it at all. You okay? Yeah. We're gonna do a couple of uh, unsafe strats. But we were talking about the um, supply of ammo drops, uh, also the craftables. <laughs> They are very scarce in Grounded. However, when it comes to the parts and the pills that you pick up in this game, they are consistent regardless of the difficulty. They're always the yep. same. Parts and supplements are exactly the same throughout all difficulties. Okay, so here we go. Um, took a while, but here is our first enemy encounter. These are runners, the same people that attacked us in the intro. All right, we have five bullets. We're gonna get three headshots. One. I missed. That was a really nice backup, so I'm... Um, okay. Right. Headshot registrations in this game are a little... iffy. Oh. You could hit the top of the forehead, but, but the game I would, would say, say it hits, like, the back or something. Shall we use the word unforgiving? That's a good word. Yep. <laughs> Okay, but that was all planned. Everything in this run is planned ahead of time. We had five pistol bullets, and now we have two. That's one thing I forgot to mention. On grounded, not so much with the other difficulties, but on grounded, you will only get ammo drops if you're below a certain amount. Oh, another little trick coming up here. If Joel is crouched in a small opening, sprint and... Yep, yeah, I think that's only possible on remastered because of the frame rate. Yep, just hold down yeah. sprint, leaving an enclosed area, and he'll do a little launch there. Okay, but with the ammo, um, I believe if you're with pistol, if you're at three bullets or less, you can... You'll, you'll potentially get a drop of pistol. If you're at two revolver bullets or less, you'll get a drop. But the shotgun is also two or less, and the rifle, I think you have to be at zero. Make sure there ain't any soldiers around. Uh... It's really all that this, matters. This game also, it, but this game can play mind games with you as well. Uh, there's a section in Billstown coming up a little bit later where uh, a clicker, one of the other infected types, gets blown up by a bomb sure. set by Bill. Oh, another restarting counterpoint here. Takes us into the next room. Now, very randomly, uh, that clicker can either drop nothing or I think it was on your stream a couple of weeks ago where he dropped two or three rifles. Two rifle it? bullets. I have, I have no two. idea why. Make also, sure <laughs> and you you feel that no you really want to pick them up. Men, yeah? But this game does have a habit of punishing you when you have more ammo than you would usually have at that point. So it's fine no, if you feel that you want to use those two rifle ammo. Uh, go ahead, but you may find that you don't get drops later on go. when you do need them. Yep. Also, pay no attention to the fact that I was, like, unloading the outside. It's, it's just a visual thing. I like to do that. <laughs> okay, we're coming up to the slums, which, if I make it past pretty cleanly, I'll be very happy, because it's one of my least favorite sections to perform in the speedrun. 
Because it's tough. You don't have a lot of uh, ammo and that? weapons at the moment. Malik. And the AI is... Uh, it's consistent for the most part, but it can be a little off sometimes. Who's that? An old headache. But again, we have two pistol bullets, and we're gonna um, we're gonna take out two enemies in the next area. One guy always drops three. The second guy sometimes drops a bullet. I'm looking for Robert. He come through here. So yeah, we'll have to see. He went back to the war. What happens? He's there now. Do we have time for a quick donation or two? Yes, you do. All right, we have $10 from Matt Aquino saying, let's give Ellie that high five she deserves. Um, we have a current bid war going on to give Ellie that high five or to leave her hanging, so get those donations in if you'd like that. <laughs> um, we also have a $10 donation from JoJo207 saying, love what y'all are doing. Can't wait to see The Last of Us done in three hours on Grounded, no less. Robert, you don't want to do this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Um, so around two hours in, we get to the damn chapter, and you can choose to high five Ellie or not. That's 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 the bid war for for the day. I usually don't uh, high five her because it's like two seconds slower, but then she makes you feel really bad about it. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So these two enemies. Nice job, Tess. These two enemies. They won't react if you just run right up to them. So there we go. Headshot the one, he had no clue I was there. And then body shot and punched the other. And that guy drops three. Now the next area. There is a locked door and three enemies. Now, the key for the locked door uh, belongs to one of the enemies. It's not the same enemy each time. It's whoever you kill last is the one who has the key. So we're gonna fire some bullets and punch people in a very specific way. So the last guy we kill is hopefully right next to, right next to the locked door. The specifics here is. You may also see in this section. There's more Roberts guys. <coughs> sorry, no, sorry. No, no. Uh, you may also see in this section how ridiculously far away something can be when you want to pick it up. He will probably pick up the key from a distance of four or five meters. Joel has amazingly it's long arms. No yeah, it's around. funny how far away you can be from something and still pick it up. All right, here we go. I missed. I don't normally do that. All right, I have to do a backup strat now. Headshot registrations, dude. All right, got to be over here now. All right, I don't know where the last guy's going to be. Let's see. He's over there. I'm just going to play a little safe. All right. Missed the headshot. There, he picked up that key all the way from over there. <laughs> it's all right. I expect stuff like that to happen throughout the run. As long as we're good on health and ammo, I'm not worried. Right, here we go. Just keep trying to save all that ammo. There we go. Can, oh, I thought you actually got it. Can you believe that headshot missed? Yeah, just like I was saying before. All right, I'm going to play it safe and pick up that med kit there. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I can't believe that headshot I was, missed. I was absolute. <laughs> I, I was convinced you got him right in the middle of the head there. Oh, my God. I, I, I said it before. Right here. Right here. They think it hit somewhere here. Uh, oh, my gosh. Whatever. 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 We're good on health. We didn't take any damage. We are perfect on ammo. That's all I care about right now. Okay, Wharf. Wrap this up. Um, I don't know how many enemies there are here. N nine, I think? Nine or ten, I think, yeah. Yeah, we're just gonna run past them all. All right. Let go of Sprint when you pick up this brick. Hold it back down when he stands up. We get alerted, but that's part of the route. Run to the right of this guy. And we are good. Perfect. And there is Robert. So a little cutscene coming up here um, in which Robert and his ridiculous ponytail will bite the dust because Te Tess has had enough of him. Don't mess with Tess. But it's also where Marlene appears. Now, she's the leader of the Fireflies, a, like a, a struggling resistance movement. 
and uh, Robert, as it turns out, sold the guns to her. Now, she's not just going to give them back. She wants to trade, so she strikes a bargain with Tess and Joel. They can have the weapons now. and more. You'll be very generous if they smuggle something out of the city. We have no idea what that is yet, but we're about to find out. They're here. Yep. And like what I showed off there on the wharf, it looked like I sprinted through the entire area, but I didn't. I stopped sprinting at a very specific spot, like an invisible line in the ground, that if I did sprint the entire way past it, I would get alerted much earlier and shot, like, a lot. And definitely 100% just die. So at certain points while I'm just sprinting through an area, I stop sprinting just a little bit and then start it back up again. The stopping of the sprint lasts usually like a... A second, sometimes less than a second, but it just delays their alert. Also, keep this in your memory. Right now, I have nothing to craft, but once I pick up your first of something, in this case, it's a shiv, it gives me the crafting ingredients to craft another one right then and there. Keep that in mind for later, because we are going to take advantage of the game's generosity with that. Joel, give me a hand with this. Because it's kind of hard to explain. It's like inventory manipulation. Oh, and one thing that you'll notice um, a little bit further into the game is certain items that we could pick up, hey, yeah, certain up. weapons, oh, we gosh. will deliberately miss them first time we uh, encounter them. Not just weapons, but things like Molotovs and, uh, well, not nail bombs, but hmm. what we do is we, f we leave the first one. And the reason for it is that Joel will pick up that item and look at it and examine it as if he's never seen one before. <laughs> it's only on the first, only on the first time that we, that we uh, see one. So we'll always ignore those and pick them up later. Yep. All right, right here. Stop sprinting, start sprinting. Swing at this guy. I don't know why Joel's model just froze there. This might be bad. Yeah, I oh, it looked no. like he was slightly... Yeah, he was just slightly slow moving off the blocks there. We're okay. Woo, okay. Yeah, we're fine. Joel kind of got stuck there on the crate. It's really bad if you die there. Whew, all right. That's grounded, yeah, people. That... I got shot once. <laughs> uh, and that is one of the few occasions in this going? game where a restart encounter is what you don't want. This way. It's not far now. Normally, I just swing at the guy and just run past. He got frozen there. I don't know. Hopefully, that don't happen again. All right. Health right here doesn't matter. You can see him grabbing his side. The place is right up ahead. The color on my controller is still blue, so that's good. Attention. If you're, like, really in peril... Anyone the color on your controller will change to like yellow, orange, or red. But you now the restart encounter here, because we're so far ahead of the other two, just brings them to where we are. Joel, give me a hand. With do we have time for another couple quick donuts? Yes, you do. Nothing happened in here. <laughs> Alrighty, so we have a $200 donation from wow. Your Lags ASE saying, had to donate for one of my favorite games, doing my part so that Ellie gets a high five. Don't leave, don't leave her hanging. Good luck with your run. That's amazing, <laughs> thank you. We also have a $10 donation from Valer Valerian Paper saying, finishing cleaning the house, that's the last of dust. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> and then we also have a $50 donation from Scary Carrie saying, so glad I was able to make it for The Last of Us run. Good luck, Anthony. Let's get that bonus Resident Evil 3 remake run later on. Yay. All right. Thank you, guys. Oh, and so uh, here's the cargo that we're smuggling. It's a 14-year-old girl uh, called Ellie, who she's got to be, she has to be taken to the Capitol building, which is outside the quarantine zone. Uh, to meet a contingent of fireflies. Now, in that cutscene that we just skipped, we learned from Marlene that uh, Tommy, Joel's brother, who we met earlier, was with the fireflies for a time. And Marlene evidently holds him in very high regard, which is why she entrusts Ellie to Joel and Tess. Now, where is Tess, you might wonder? Well, Tess has gone to check with Marlene that the weapons actually exist, but in the meantime, we have to take Ellie to this safe house, which is where we are now. 
And in the little cutscene that comes up, uh, Joel decides he's going to get some sleep. Uh, Ellie walks by him and says, your watch is broken, which is when we realise that the watch that Sarah gave him for his birthday, it's bro it is broken, but he still wears it. There it is, you can see it right there. Yep. She's lost a lot of men. Beggars can't be choosers. I just hope there's someone alive to pay us. Which, according to Troy Baker, who plays Joel, um, the watch did actually break in that cutscene where she, where Sarah dies. It's not stated in the game, um, but that's what he said, so we believe him. Yeah. I trust him. <laughs> A bullet must have hit it or something. Okay, how many of these generators do we use throughout the game? Four? Was it four or five? I think it's five. I think so, too. Might need people in chat to keep count for us. Yep. They all look the same, and they all... They all turn on when you pull it three times. <laughs> Girl must be important. I love video game logic. What is the deal with you? All right, neat little trick coming up here. All this little stuff, you know, it adds up over the course of three hours. Uh... How long is this all going to take? So right here, if you hit triangle, if you hold down triangle when you start climbing this ladder and point the camera up, you can hit the triangle prompt at the bottom of the ladder instead of climbing all the way up to trigger this in-game cutscene here. Hold up. There's a patrol up ahead. Uh, big mistake by Joel here. You see those two soldiers just disappearing off the truck? Joel right. thinks that they've gone. Good. Come on up. Bad call, Joel. Come on, kid. Very bad. Watch right, uh, up. This area is, is called the outside, but the area after this is called uh, the downtown building. And that's where the run really starts picking up. Holy shit. I'm actually outside. So, we're about to go through this truck here and get collared by these uh, two soldiers. Yep. Just here and, we go. And being reasonable people, we kill them. Um, now, Logically. one of the two sol one of the two soldiers that we just killed was carrying a, a handheld scanner, which shows whether or not a person is infected. Now, Ellie has returned a positive, but she claims she was bitten three weeks ago. So somehow she's immune because turning usually takes uh, a few days. But Joel, Joel isn't buying it. The conversation has been cut short because one of the soldiers radioed for backup, and it's arrived. So we're running. Yep, just gotta run. You don't have to kill anybody. There are a lot of sections where you have to kill everybody in order to progress, and others where you can just run through. So we're gonna take advantage of those sections and save our ammo. Nice jump. That corner jump is very tricky. It is. But it's, import it's important to get it because it changes what these guys do, because now Joel can sprint. If he hadn't made the jump if he'd grabbed onto the ledge or something it changes the timing yeah you want to crouch underneath their flashlights like skimming by you and then you can just run right past Come if you on. miss if you mess up the jump uh like dino said uh it affects their flashlight <laughs> all right one more stretch of soldiers sometimes i take damage here we'll see what happens we need to get a brick as well don't go around. <laughs> Looks good. They didn't even fire a bullet. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> they must have had the safety on their guns or something. Perfect split. Nice. These right. very intelligent soldiers here cannot see Joel's flashlight. Or anything. You can't you can't shoot at them, but normally human enemies can see your flashlight. They nothing with those guys, nothing at all. Um, okay, uh, another cutscene coming up, and just at the end of this, where the gate is ahead of us. Uh, so Ellie explains that the fireflies doctors in some location that she's not aware of are hoping to use her uh, apparent immunity to create the vaccine. Joel is not interested. He just wants to go back. But Tess persuades him. She says that, you know, they've come this far, so let's just finish it. So we're going to carry on to the Capitol building now. Yep. Yeah, we have to bring her to the Capitol building, but we got to make our way through this building because the entire, this entire town here was 
bombed and like roads don't exist anymore so we got to cut through buildings in order to get to where we need to go this building here is on an angle clearly <laughs> and it's full of infected so this is where we start having like infected enemy encounters just throws you right in there but we still have a little bit of of time before we get there. Um, let me explain the inventory manipulation that I was talking about. So again, when I picked up that shiv earlier, it gave me the crafting, because it was the first one that I picked up, it gave me the crafting ingredients to craft another, another one of whatever it is that I picked up, because it was the first. Yeah, shivs, medkits, molotovs, stuff like that. So throughout this downtown building, the game is going to be placing medkits in our way. But we're not going to pick them up because we don't really need medkits for this run. If a run is perfect, I don't need to heal at all. Uh, but what we do need is Molotovs. There's our first supplement pickup right there. So what we want to do is delay picking up what the game thinks is our first medkit. The one in the, in the slums didn't count because that didn't introduce us to crafting. Oh, we want to the hold your controller up because you don't need the square prompt. But I'll just remind you. You don't have to press it. <laughs> there we go. Naughty Dog's Lion D there. It's not actually a QTE. Some are. Some aren't. Anyway, before I was so rudely interrupted by that clicker. Uh, <laughs> well, speaking of which, you can't tell on the heads up display. Joel has five bars of health. That clicker did two bars of damage. So now I only have three bars of health, which is very inconvenient from here to the capital. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, well, a couple things. Clear. See, this is where, like, there are way more strats than I can keep up with. If you, if you enter that door with two pistol bullets or less, that clicker will always drop three. So now we have five, which is the most we could possibly have. Um, what else? Yes, after certain chapters, you get all of your health back. In this game, off the top of my head, it's after uh, Cargo, after the Capitol, after Bill's Town, after the Sniper, after the Dam Fight, after the Ranch, um, and then after Winter, and then after the Tunnel. So certain chapters, you get all of your health back. Oh, that's a clicker, by the way. <laughs> Yes, uh, now the game uh, probably leads you to believe that the clicker is the second um, stage of infection. It's not, it's actually the third. The second is called the stalker, but we don't meet those very often. But the first time we meet the stalker is, um, is not it? in the stalker room, is it? Uh, the first time we meet stalkers is the hotel basement. Yes, that's right, yes. And then the sewers. Also, pay no attention to the fact that a 14-year-old girl just saved a 20-year veteran of the apocalypse. Just, just pretend you didn't see that. <laughs> Companions get plus signs, and if they fill in, it's game over. But if you hit a certain mark, they, they, they spawn next to you. Okay, we'll talk more about the inventory stuff later. This is a pretty difficult fight. There's four runners and one clicker. Now, something very convenient with this game is if you throw a brick or a bottle at a runner or a human and you swing a melee weapon at them, it's an insta-kill. Yeah. So we are going to take advantage of that. There's also a revolver in our way and a med kit. We're not going to pick up either of those because, again, he looks at it for a really long time. It wastes like 15 seconds to pick it up here. But here comes the fight. Okay. So any of you who have played this casually, I remember my first time on this. I think I took me an hour to get through this. So, bearing in mind, an hour. He's gone. That, run, that runner's gonna be over there. That's all right. That was good. Just a little time loss. Over here. I'm over here. He's stuck behind it. There you go. There you go. No, I'm over here. I'm over here. There's that PlayStation 3 pathfinding, people. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> but like I said, you know, 
you're playing this casually, it, you would you would take a long time getting through that section. That was spoiled. That was just bad RNG. But still, about what 30 seconds or something? About that. Yeah, that runner was supposed to be like right on me after I killed Let's the clicker. Go. And from the right, countless on. hours I've played around with the section, there's nothing I can do about it. Um, okay, so notice I picked up the revolver right there. The reason I didn't pick it up earlier is because, again, you get this long animation of him looking at it. There's nothing I can do about the tutorial, but he didn't spend all day looking at it. Now, I also pick, uh, skipped the med kit because, again, we want to pick up a Molotov and craft another Molotov before we get our first med kit. So that restart encounter right there is skipping Tess giving us a med kit. The game is just like, Anthony, will you please pick up a med kit? And I'm just like, <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Uh, so we're coming up to one of the first, well, probably the first uh, combat section in the game where people always say, isn't that a glitch? So, Anthony, explain why using the brick and almost causing the alert and yes. the clicker not spawning in is not a glitch. Yes. Okay, first got to get some stuff. There's a Molotov, but... We're going to pick it up over here because um, you don't have to spend all day looking at it. Now, yes, there is something here. When you enter this area, there's supposed to be a clicker underneath the ladder that leads to the outside. But it turns out if you get alerted before the halfway point in this area, the clicker never spawns in. So what we do is we almost get alerted, and that prevents the clicker from ever spawning in. So, here we so go. it's not a despawn which is probably the reason why it's um, accepted as not being a glitch. Yes, it is a spawn prevention. Do we have time for a couple donations here? Yes, yes you do. Alrighty, we have a $25 donation from Marco91 saying, Hi, Ant, my donation for seeing you high five Ellie for once. Smiley face. I hope Bill won't give you too much trouble later and good luck on the run. He will. He will. <laughs> we also have a $25 donation from Cookie Jack saying, Good luck on The Last of Us, Ant. The Ant Colony Discord is cheering you on and standing by with plenty of towels. <laughs> <laughs> Inside joke. Holy shit. We yeah, actually made it. It's a valid point. Everyone it's a valid There yes. you go. Let's move. <laughs> you guys are pretty good at this stuff. Okay. There we go. Right, cool. right into the next area. There's three runners in that building, out. and we need to move a crate over to that truck. So what we're going to do is fire a bullet at a very specific spot, and all three runners come out the right side, leaving this way. Hopefully. I'm gonna do the safer strat. Shit, runners! Okay. So if you put that crate in their line of sight, they don't see Joel. They don't care that the crate's moving. They only care about Joel, and since they can't see him, no alert. Alright, that was that was a good downtown. Very nice. So I had a bit of a hard time explaining that. Molotovs and medkits require the same crafting ingredients. And again, you get a full thing in your inventory, the first one you pick up, and if that inventory is already empty. So what we want to do to get an extra Molotov throughout the run is pick up a Molotov before you pick up your first medkit and craft a Molotov. So now we have two Molotovs, and we haven't picked up our first medkit yet. So because our inventory oh, yeah. is empty, we're going to get another thing of rags and alcohol, which we'll use for another I hope, Molotov. I hope everybody was taking uh, notice of that. I'll be asking questions later. <laughs> um, okay, this is a... I'll let Ant explain it. There's a very specific move that you do here, or rather... You're waiting for a very specific move from a clicker in this corridor because Joel can actually run through here. Yep, another section where you don't have to kill anybody. Also, again, that med kit is there only because we didn't pick one up prior. Once you pick up your first one, they all despawn later on. But yes. So in, the, in this corridor, we're looking for a clicker to be very slightly flat-footed, but it's so hard to spot. 
Let's see, here we go. Tess. So this clicker, as soon as he becomes flat foot and starts like twitching a little, like right there, start your sprint and run past. And we're good. All right, sometimes this runner can be a pain. Let's see what he does. All right, he's in the middle of the hallway. That's good. Sometimes he can push you against the wall like as soon as you open the door. Quite annoying. Now, as we run through this uh, section here, there are three windows uh, to jump through. Ellie will get grabbed, get a plus sign. If you run through the... If you jump through the right-hand window, that plus sign will not go away. But middle or left... There, you see? Gone. Whew. That was close. Just like in the downtown building, the pathfinding there is a little... That runner, like, really wants to guard that window instead of attacking us, so... That was close. Uh, uh, another very shortcut scene here. While we're waiting for Tess to cross this plank, Joel and Ellie have a, a nice little civilized conversation while they admire the view of the uh, Capitol building. Uh, and, but when it finishes, Joel looks at his broken watch and he's, he's kind of evidently seeing Sarah in Ellie, which is what this game is all about, uh, you know, to a large extent. And it's Tess who has to snap, out of, snap him out of it and say, come on, let's go. Yep. Uh, there's a lot that happens in the next cutscene as well, so maybe I should just kind of describe it because we're just, we're just jogging Go to for it. it. That's all. There's um, the capital. <clears throat> so, but uh, but I'll start by pointing out that we are still being chased by the soldiers. Uh, but we get into the Capitol building. The I mean, contingent like of Fireflies is side, dead. Me. And that they haven't left any kind of clue about where they were supposed to take Ellie. And Joel really does want to give up and go back at this point. But it turns out that back in the museum, Tess got bitten by one of the infected. We think it's that one by the door as Joel bursts through. Mm. Um, so she tells Joel to get Ellie to Tommy. Remember, he was a firefly, so he'd probably know where they're based. Um, but as she does that, so, uh, soldiers arrive, and but she stays behind. She doesn't want to turn, so she's buying some time now by trying to hold the soldiers off to give these two time to escape. Just keep pushing. If you can hear it really briefly. Sacrifices herself so we can get... We can progress further. Okay, now here we are able to pick up the rifle. But if you pick it up normally... He stares at it for a long time, but what I did there was I progressed into the further into the room, which spawned enemies, so I was able to uh, pick it up without looking at it. Come on. No damage. Nice. All right. Just and run that, past would those you guys. Would you believe is a slower strat? Yeah, than there's a, a faster bit. one, but it's, it's way more risky. I'm doing marathon safe stuff here. All right, let's see what we get here. He's walking towards us. That's good. Stay down. I don't know how many there are. Oh, he might spot me. I see it. Stay low. No, we're good. All right. Whew. That's the capital. <laughs> so there's a couple different things of RNG that can happen there when you get to the bottom floor. <clears throat> um, when you're going through that last like doorway. You look at the enemy in the back. He, if he's walking towards you, you can go into the room to the right. If, but sometimes he can walk into that room to the right and another enemy walks towards you. So what you got to do is go down the middle, punch the guy, and then just run towards the exit. I wasn't lying to you. So that was uh, good RNG from the game. All right, there are these two guys, though. Sometimes they can hear us. No, place is empty. I'm going over this way. Check over there. Uh, not this time. Good. Nope, we're good. Probably like five or six times I've gotten shot in my back and died here. Because they can just randomly know where you are. It's really weird. All right. I don't want to jinx it, but I don't think I've taken... Uh, I don't know why I'm going to say this. I don't think I've taken any damage so far this run. Of course, now, the RNG gods, they just heard me. I don't know why I said that. Well, even if it wasn't the RNG guys, uh, gods who heard you, Bill certainly did. Oh, yeah. Bill definitely heard me. <laughs> uh, talking of whom, that's who we're about to go to uh, look for. Now, Bill 
Um, he is, was, Tess's and Joel's main, uh, maybe the, the only uh, supplier of contraband from outside the Boston QZ. Joel is hoping that Bill can fix them up with a car because they're going to need it. We, we don't know where Tommy lives. We probably think that Joel does. Uh, but it's evidently a long way from Boston, so we can't get there by walking. Well, we could, but it'd be a very long game. Oh, I got shot at the docks. That's right. I have a horrible memory when it comes to that. I nearly... How could I forget that I nearly died in the cargo? Okay. Just ignore me. Do we have time to read a couple donations? Uh, yes. Alrighty, we have a $50 donation from Amber is Rad saying, The Last of Us at GDQ, that is amazing. Good luck, Ant. Awesome commentary, as always, by Dino. Chat always loves his voice. Let's high five Ellie today. Thank you, Amber. Thanks, Amber. We also have a $100 donation from Tim Rock saying, Oh, you know we are high fiving Ellie. Ant Colony represent. Yeah. Tim. We also have a $25 donation from Michael Caliber saying, good luck, Anthony, so proud of you. Ah, oh, thanks, that's my brother. Like this, that's mm. all. In the woods? Yeah. Thanks, Mikey. Never walked in the woods, it's kinda cool. All right, here we are in Billstown. Now, the whole inventory manipulation with the Molotov and the med kit, it also applies here. But this time, it's with nail bombs and a modded melee weapon. She was up to the test, so, she what you want to do is delay picking up a modded melee weapon, because that will give you a full thing of blades and binding, and wait until you pick up your first nail bomb, which will give you a full thing of blades and explosives, and craft another nail bomb that the game gives you, because you are empty uh, on inventory with that, and then you can pick up a modded weapon after that, which I believe will give you the supplies to craft another modded weapon, uh, much later on in the game. My brain hurts. <sighs> and make sure you place that... Make sure you place that plank as far into the corner as you can, or Joel will just make the decision to place it kind of in the middle of the wall. Mm -hmm. Waste a load of time. Go. Okay. I like this strat coming up here. It's the Ellie Whistle Strat. So we come over here. Go down near... We get this little sound glitch here. here. It, it's just something that happens. It's a good drop. The sound just keeps skipping and skipping. Now what you want to do is spend like an extra second in this room than you normally would. And as a result... Sometimes that door... That door doesn't spawn in sometimes, which is weird. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it doesn't. And Ellie's trying to whistle. Are you slow. all right? I'm trying to learn how to whistle. You don't know how to whistle. All right, we're still good. So what we what happens there, if you stay in that building long enough, you trigger the dialogue that's supposed to happen in there, but when you bring it out here, it skips a bunch more dialogue so you can boost Ellie up, like, right away. Saves, like, seven why seconds. Did, uh, and why did you fire a gun? I'm just wasting all that ammo, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the question I get asked the most. Um, there were two clickers behind us. And we're, it was just so we could sprint that little bit right there. So also, revolver ammo is not super important right now because after we well, fall we victim to time. Bill's trap, uh, we leave that area with a bunch of revolver ammo. So it makes sense to use all of it right no now. Oh, okay. Lives far from okay. Next okay. clever little exploit coming up here. Ellie is, we're going to use a ladder to get on top of this truck and place a plank. What would usually happen is that we would then have to wait for Ellie to follow us across. But there's a quicker way, isn't there, Anthony? Yes, there is. There's always a quicker way. Well, there's an even faster way, but that's not allowed in Glitchless. <laughs> what you do is you pick up this plank and you place it as far to the right as you can. Just Wait until it transitions from press triangle to place. There we go. And now Ellie's supposed to cross this with us. We're just going to pick it up from the other side. Ellie still gets up here, but we don't have to wait for her to cross it. Saves like five seconds, I think. It's all clear. Come on up. Okay. Now, 
We need to get rid of a couple nail bombs in our way. Uh, I think this is actually a pretty good time for a couple more donations. Sounds good. We have a $200 donation Ooh. from Zemeon saying, long time fan of games done quick. Keep up the good work. Nice. We also have a $50 donation from Cricket Spin 245 uh, saying, crooked. hey, Aunt Andrew here, AKA Crooked Spin. Good luck on your run. Where Happy I can it? catch it live. Right. Thank you for helping support such Where a great charity exactly with your most. speed running talents. Maybe next year we can see, see you do part two in a marathon. Get there. Maybe. You let me do a lot of work still to be done with that. Yep. Crooked uh, worked on The Last of Us 2. He had a lot to do with the infected in part two, the entire game. Very cool stuff. So thanks, Crooked. <clears throat> I got you. We also we also have a twenty dollar donation from Yiggy's saying The Last of Us is one of my favorite games I've ever one played, and it makes me tracks. so happy to donate to the incentive and also support Doctors Without Borders. Good luck to the runner. That fridge, it looks like that's a counterweight. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right, so right here, we're trapped here until Ellie can cut us down and runners and clickers are gonna come running towards us. Now, on easy, normal, hard, and survivor, if a runner catches up to you, you just mash square, punch it off you, and you get a free headshot. On grounded, even if it's just a runner, it kills you. So, we really gotta hold these guys off. Two bullets to kill a runner, four to kill a clicker. Just memorize their spawns, and... Open fire. Now, Joel, Joel effectively has unlimited ammo in this section, but it's still important how many shots we actually use. What we want to do here is maximize how many shots we, we come out with. The ideal is 15 or 16, but we need to get the shots. Very nice. All right, that's it for the first wave. Now this looks like a refrigerator is going to fall down and Joel will be hoisted up even higher. So we're safe. But now we need to protect right. Ellie. Yeah. Come on, you can now, yes, there is a trick that we do here. Normally, you leave this fight with anywhere from 11 to 13 revolver Thanks. bullets, but we can do something that allows us to leave with more. Damn it. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right. Reload. Now, that was the last enemy in the section. It was a clicker. So I shot it three times. I reloaded the gun. And that should give us a lot more ammo leaving the section. And that's Bill. That's probably, unfortunately, the most useful thing you're going to see him do in our time with him. That's nice. 16 revolver bullets. That's perfect. You can get 17, but we don't know why that happens. 16 is very consistent, though. All right, use this time to craft whatever we need here. Which way? And we're just going to run through this building to the next cutscene, uh, which will only take a few seconds, but there's a, just a little bit to say about it. Bill is as unfriendly as Joel says, and he certainly does not like Ellie. But he also doesn't have a car. So we're going to join him, or we're going to follow him to find some parts that will allow him at Their least to get the car running. First, we are going to... He has a little armory a little way from here. Um, so we're going to get some new weapons and be introduced to, to uh, a shotgun and a nail bomb. But first, we have to make sure that we can get ahead of Bill up these stairs. Yep, you need to follow behind Bill through this door as close as you can because you should take one step backwards, which he does. That means you can get ahead of him here because Bill is kind of slow. So please get out of my way. Thank you. Oh, he was polite there. So yeah, we picked up, we could have picked up the bow earlier, but again, he just would have looked at it for like five, six seconds so we can just pick it up right here. What are you delivering? And it's just in our inventory. All right, this next area is very important. I get, I, I do it first try. Because if I die, the game, like, eats the supplies that I use. It doesn't give them back. <sighs> okay. So there's, what, four runners and a clicker? There's a nail bomb on the ground. There's a nail bomb on the ground. And it doesn't become active until... Uh, I'm alerted. Now, that Molotov is going to draw them all around the nail bomb. 
takes one of these cards. I'm just gonna wait a little bit. Oh, they're a, mm, yeah, they're a little bit scattered. That that did not in the kill. Background. Oh my. Okay, this is really bad. I'm just gonna play it safe. All right, where's another brick I can use? All right, Bill killed it. That was horrible. <laughs> no other way around yeah, it. That was really bad. Yeah, it was that clicker that that um, ended up behind the car where you are now. Yep. They're just supposed to really spoiled it. Yeah, they're they're trying to get around here, but they got caught on this car and just went this way. Bad. Uh, how many how many hits did I use on the pipe? That's important. Uh. I'm going to say two. I might be wrong. No, I think I just used one. No, I think I just used one. Ah, uh, okay. That means I have... I'm not forgetting anything, am I? Reloaded, reloaded. I'm going to have to compensate for that rifle bullet later. That's okay. I'm good on uh, pistol ammo, so that's going to help me a lot. Okay, we need to keep track. Oh, we're here to... We're here yep. to... Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, I'm, I'm, uh, okay, so what we're doing here is we're right, gearing up. Further, uh, Ellie wants to gear up sure. as well, but Joel says no, so she's rummaging. She's busying herself by rummaging through of, uh, some of Bill's uh, belongings. In the meantime, we do learn a little about Bill here. He's, uh, he's a complete loner. He even describes his former partner as, well, a little more than a burden, really. But yeah. now, there we go, we got our nail bomb. Yep, so now we can pick up a modded so weapon later and get the supplies the that we need. We okay, now, I need to remember how many hits I have left in my pipe. Uh, and remember, we have no HUD to tell us. Anyway, you gotta keep track in here. Um, so normally it has nine, we used once, and now we have eight. The reason we need to keep track is we're gonna do a trick outside the high school later on. Um, and it involves a broken melee weapon. We'll talk about that later, though. Here, we need to we need to get there first. Joel needs a car. Bill. This is the first occasion where Bill. If Bill can be a. Uh, I'm not going to use a rude word. Go on. No. Bill can be pretty useless at <laughs> this section. Yes, that even that's being kind. He he's not a useful companion. He might surprise us, but it's the plus signs. If he gets a plus sign here, we got to redo the section. So it's just a bunch of clickers in our way. We just got to make our way past in a pretty specific way. But here we go. We're going to be counting the hits. I have eight, seven, I already killed it. Oh, he'll make up for it. Five, four. Looking good. Beautiful. And I got the bullet back. Very nice. And get this. That was perfect. Hold up. All right, hold on. I need to gear here. I suggest we move quietly. We distract these runners and swing a pipe at this runner. So hopefully no infected. Up, oh, we got one. Uh, we have two. Okay. It's weird. The strap okay, failed miserably. Left. Oh, I got one chasing me. Wait. I... All right. I'm just. Come on. Come oh, here. Yes. Come here. Whatever. All right. That failed miserably, but we have all our health. We're good on supplies. That's all right. So I make that two hits left on the pipe? Yeah, and that's fine. That's fine. I was aware of that. Um, I picked up the arrows, right? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay. I need the arrows there. What was supposed to happen was no infected. We're supposed to spawn over here, and then one followed us. We had to kill an extra three runners compared to how it's supposed to go. Oh, run past those guys. In my... When I'm, when I'm doing, like, record attempts... There's the plus sign. He's fine, though. When I'm doing record attempts, um, I think we're good. this section in, in Live Split is called Rip Run. Ironically we're enough, the section in this game is called Graveyard. And I feel that's very going. poetic in a way. Not, <laughs> enough, not enough gravestones to count how many runs that I've lost here. 
Okay, outside the high school. So what we're gonna do is use the two hits on our broken, uh, almost broken pipe. We're gonna break the melee weapon, then we're gonna switch to a gun. He's gonna drop the gun instead of the broken melee weapon. And the game's going to compensate us with a lot more shotgun ammo. Move out of my way. Bait this one over here. One hit left. They're very loud behind us. Oh, I thought you might have got the two for one there. Unlucky. Almost. Oh my god. Wow, the... Look at this game right now. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna... That wasn't that much health lost. I'm just gonna do a slow kill animation. <laughs> Look at this <laughs> They drop anything? Well, Let me just double check. Nah. All right. Hold up somewhere else. Like I said, rip run. Test our luck. How do we get inside? All right. I'm pretty sure we did get compensated with a lot of shotgun ammo. There, sh there should be a drop of three over there. I got pushed against the wall and then grabbed. <laughs> back to back. <laughs> it's there like wasn't you even were a wall. Already you were already attacking the one on the right and got grabbed by the one on the left while you were doing that. I know. It's so weird because they push you against the wall, but you can see this thing's about as high as my waist. Yeah, whatever. Okay, we just need to get to the hood of the truck. There's the truck buried in the wall. That's supposed to have the battery, uh, but it doesn't. Bill opens the, uh, the hood. Go, 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 you two, go! and the battery has gone. However, Bill does know who took it, but uh, yeah, discussion interrupt us or infected. Okay, I don't know how where to start explaining this one. We're gonna start by explaining that we're just gonna go Rambo. We'll sneak out the back. Now pay attention to our supplies here. We used up all their stuff and we get it all back. This is the spot I was explaining to you earlier about. Once you kill all those enemies and hit the triangle prompt here, sometimes you can soft lock the area. And the only way to get out of here is with a restart encounter. Now it just so happens when you restart encounter on grounded only, you get your stuff back. So it's just one of those things that we allow. Okay, bloater, big, big boy, bloater. Might've been a gym teacher, who knows. Okay, here we go. Super duper hard to kill. Let's see how also I do. Known as, also known as Future Bill. I did a little poem there. And he's dead. Oh, that was nice. That was really nice. So the Molotov has to hit him in the upper half of the body with a manual throw. He falls back onto the fire and then you shotgun him twice. Dead. I hate to interrupt your little biology lesson, Whew. but can we get really the nice. fuck out of here, please? Let's go, people. Right. I'm pretty sure that damage I took outside the high school only did two bars of damage. I'm still doing okay. All right, come on. All right, a couple more. We're gonna kill the one in front and injure the one in the back. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, I'll get Will the one you up get there. trolled? Will you? No, Will you get I, trolled with the drop? I didn't kill the one. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, I got one. Nice. Yeah, oh, oh, Very nice. Them. So again, the strat there was to kill the one in Are front, then Let's injure go. the one in the back. But I ended up not killing the one in the front. It and just, the it just, here, it just delays uh, the spawn of the third one. That's all. And the, the strat here is to make sure that you jump off this roof ahead of Bill. This way. Yeah, we're good. He we're can run up. surprisingly very fast. <laughs> And if he does, if, and if he beats you to that ladder, um, you'll have to kill the runners because he'll push you out of the way. Uh, right, what are we doing here? Okay, so we just found the body of Frank, uh, Bill's former partner who hanged himself after getting infected, as you do. Uh, now, in the garage, um, Ellie has found a car complete with the battery taken by Frank. Uh, she's tried turning the engine, but it won't start. So. Here we are. We're about to tr uh, push the, the truck. That was sure difficult to say. Good idea. I nearly <laughs> said I nearly said trush the puck. <laughs> <laughs> and it could it could have come out far worse. Oh God! I'm gonna push the truck. 
Okay, All there, right, there's a lot of stuff here. So we're gonna do some. <laughs> we're gonna do some more spawn prevention. There's supposed to be a clicker and two runners here, but the game spawns them in out of thin air. So what we do? Shoot the clicker as soon as he spawns in, and that prevents the spawn of the two other runners in this first wave. Whoa, almost didn't stop walking. Okay, I'm going to try for the truck push. It is a one frame perfect trick. I'll let you know if I got it. If not, I'm just gonna take these guys out. Mm. Oh, shoot. I'm just gonna... All right, I definitely did not get it. Man, the shotgun does not do that much damage. <laughs> All right, four more enemies. Um, to be fair, on a world record run, it's actually a little bit disappointing if you do get the truck push, and that is the reason why you get the world record, because it's you, you really can't control it. It will either happen or it won't. Yep. What ends up happening is you push, you stop pushing the truck the exact same frame as Bill, and the truck pushes itself down the hill. Highly specific, but believe me, a lot of people have actually gotten it without realizing it. Um, big, big cutscene coming up now. Not really too much that we need to say, um, but we're taking a long drive into Pittsburgh. Now, as we arrive, we fall into a trap set by hunters. Now, they're like a, a brutal group who scavenge, uh, well, people. They hunt for tourists, the name given to those who try to live outside the quarantine zone, to, and, and they're not themselves hunters. Their tactic is to kill first and then find out if their victims were carrying anything useful. But these are hunters. They're not friendly. Yep. This is just so you're not asleep at the wheel. This is a square prompt you do have to hit. This guy also is not friendly. I'm gonna try being nice first. Excuse me, sir. Could you please stop? I don't think she... Excuse me, sir. Sir. I asked nicely, okay? Okay, well, that was the equivalent mm. of a high five. <laughs> All right. I can't use a rifle bullet, so this might be a little iffy. Let's see. I asked nicely. Important. Important restart encounter here for the um, no, enemy I'm not positions. Gonna try it. Oh, you're not going to do Let's it? See. Let's oh, see. Okay. Oh. Good headies. I'm going to do the revolver kill here. Okay, we're fine. You better be right here. He's right now. Here. We have three more. Three more guys. Three are going to come over the uh, the bus in the background, but they're kind of on a timer. The important thing here is we need to end this fight with two rifle bullets. That was the important part, which is why I was a little worried when I had to use one right before the graveyard section. Um, and you saw, once again, the wonderful headshot registration <laughs> that, ha that made me have to waste a revolver bullet. I felt like an absolute idiot because on the second shot, I actually said, good headies, because I was convinced that the second one was a headshot. Yeah. What's that, like three now? That should have been headshots, but weren't? Yeah. I'm putting those in clips of the month. <laughs> okay. So, next thing, we don't have to worry about inventory manipulation anymore. Notice at the end of Billstown, that modded bat was there. It was because I just didn't pick one up prior. So, now we have smoke bombs, but we're gonna delay picking this one up. So we don't have to stare at it for so long, like we've been doing. How does he know? Of what? I've been on both sides. Now coming up is one of it's very quick, but it's one of my favorite strats. All right. It's because you just like massacre these three people, and 
Slow down. Wait for me. I use the two rifle bullets that we have, so then the last enemy drops the two rifle bullets back, so we basically kill three people and we didn't have to waste anything. Um, I do remember the first uh, run that we did together, which was actually a, um, um, a, a proper li live event. Yeah, we were both there. I, I, on a couple of occasions, I did use the phrase poetry, oh, sheer poetry. But this is one where it's absolutely true. I love this strat here. There. There you go. Oh, and there's the two rifle bullets. Perfect. We also need the alcohol that that guy drops, which is 100% consistent. Perfect. Poetry, as you say. <laughs> and how, how many guys are there in the bookstore, do you reckon? 15? Uh, let's go with that. There's a lot. Um, stop sprinting here. Start up again here. Do a jogging leap over. Hit the brick. This guy is right where he should be. Right after you throw the brick. Jog and then sprint after the brick hits him. And there's an alert, but it's too late. They can't do anything. Bye bye, 15 guys. Yep. Nice knowing you. There's a chance you can just run past a bunch of enemies. Man, I'm going to jump at that opportunity. All right. Uh, not a lot here. We're just going to swap some weapons out and. That's about it. Down, 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 down. So I think now is a good time for some donations. More of them. Sounds great. We have a $200 donation Yay. from Brandon saying, so incredibly excited to be watching one of my favorite video games played right. during one of my favorite events of the year. Waking up at 3 a.m. all the way in Singapore is definitely worth it. When you're lost in the darkness, look for the light. Good luck during the run. Tremendous. Thank you. Come on. We have a $50 donation from Marlene25 saying, I've been watching you for almost five years and I'm so proud of you for finally having this moment. Mm. Thanks, Marlene. <laughs> we also have a $50 donation from Loki Lasher saying, congratulations on finally getting to GDQ, Anthony. Here's $50 to not high five Ellie. Oh, sacrilege. What the hell? <laughs> Ultimate comeback. <laughs> <laughs> We have a $50 donation from Kimothy saying, Anthony, at GDQ, this is everything we've been waiting for. Also, hi, Dino. Shout out to the amazing ant colony. I love you all, and always high five Ellie. Thank you, Kimmy. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> we um, have... No. Oh. Go ahead, go ahead, it's fine. Okay, okay. Uh, we got one more here. Uh, we have a $25 donation from Best and Tamriel saying, love The Last of Us so much and, and really glad to see it at this event. Good luck on the rest of your run and this goes to the Resident Evil 3 bonus game. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah, since a lot of donations are mentioning it, this was my, now you just need I think, 10th time Do submitting this game run? and it, it finally got in. Yeah. So thank you, Games Done Quick really means a lot. This was, uh, I've wanted this for a long time, so thank you. All right, this was the spot in the E3 2012 demo. No. The hotel. There, this area definitely holds like the most enemies on both like first floor, second floor. Uh, we're just gonna kill one of them and go right for the elevator shaft, which goes to the next section. You gotta do it in a pretty specific way. So we picked up a bottle. Distract. Distraction. Stop sprinting here. Start up again through here. No alert, that's good. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna spawn in the enemies. You can tell by the subtitles. That's the only reason we have them on. Yeah, I hear it too. Move Ellie. And we're gonna use a bow on this guy right here. We get good RNG. Oh. Arrow didn't break, so I will gladly pick that one back up. Nice. I have to say, they were very, very quick. Move into the rooms on the right. They can, they can be quite slow. Yeah, there's like two outcomes of like their movement. You need to wait until those two enemies go into their rooms, then you can just arrow that guy. Uh, sometimes the second guy to go into his room is like four or five seconds slower than what it was there. So good. This once, is 
Oh, sorry. Carry on. Carry on. Real quick, once once you, for those who don't know, once those elevator doors are open, all the enemies in the hotel despawn. So if you want to like scavenge for supplies, open the door first, and then go back. Because there's nobody now, left. This is probably everybody's scariest section coming up. But it's quite amazing, you know. Once you actually know the route that you're going to take and you know what your strat is, it's very straightforward. However, however, when it comes to RNG, this is maybe one of the worst, if not the worst, compared... Well, it's either the stalker room in the sewers or this, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the stalker areas, they're... Uh, <clears throat> um, they are the worst in terms of RNG. Because stalkers, they once they see you, they don't rush you. They hide behind a corner of a doorway, and then they jump out at you. Also, their attacks are the quickest in the game. So if you try and wind up a punch, or even the time it takes to throw a brick or a bottle, they're already hitting you. And sometimes, most of the time, they combo their attacks, like swing, swing, grab, or something, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, yeah, basically, if, if, if we get hit once, uh, restart. <laughs> Yeah, and don't even think, once you're under attack, don't even think about trying to draw a weapon. Okay, but there's also a bloater down here, and we're going to manipulate him, him a little bit. Yep. Okay, so we're also going to not see him. Yeah, people are just like, you. this isn't grounded, he wasn't there. He's there, we just get him to hop down to the first floor. So what we need to do is turn on a generator, pick up a key card for a locked door, and then leave but there's a lot of stalkers and a bloater in our way. So what we're gonna do is place a nail bomb right there. There are no enemies, but in three, two, one. First pull of the generator, stalkers spawn in out of thin air, and we blow the one up that spawns right on the nail bomb. So now what we're gonna do, sprint around the bottom floor, like so. I'm gonna get the brick. I'm gonna get the key card. Give a little bit of time for some stalkers to move by to the right. There's the bloater down there. There's one right there, but we move past. And that is a Beautiful. perfect hotel basement. Okay. There is no reason to be scared, boys and girls. Yeah, no reason at all. <laughs> the bloater, the sprinting after we turned the generator on made it so the bloater hopped down to the first floor. Okay, this area I like uh, doing. Let's not, see if it works out. This is a... Yeah, this is a... when it works. And it usually does. No alert. You know, you know, don't say things like that. Perfect. I'll take that um, pistol bullet. Very nice. That's random. Ooh, no, this that's is good. the set. The second instance of the square prompt that you don't need, but not there's two of them. <laughs> don't don't ignore the first one. Yeah. Uh, but it will come to a cutscene where Ellie will come to the rescue here, and she'll kill this attacker. And there's a short scene where she finally challenges Joel's kind of lack of gratitude for the way that he helps her out. She just saved his life, but he still doesn't do it. He just says they have to get going. So you might notice. Um, over the next, I don't know, five minutes or so, that her dialogue is a little bit <laughs> belligerent, shall we say? She deserves more credit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she saves us here in the cutscene. <clears throat> okay. The big one. The big, the yeah. The big... This is the big one. Normally, there are, like, groups of, I don't know, a dozen or more enemies that we can just run past. Here, there are, depending on how, if I can nail a trick, there's anywhere from 13 to 15 human enemies. And we have to take them all out. That's what we've been, like, conserving our resources for. We're going to use a nail bomb, a Molotov, a rifle bullet, and six revolver bullets, I'm pretty sure. And we're going to attempt to kill anywhere from 13 to 15 enemies in about 30 seconds. Yeah, about a hand. <clears throat> Now, the reason I say 13 to 15 is because there's a strat. If I throw a Molotov and it kills at least three enemies, two less enemies spawn in in the last wave. And there will be a, a, a short cutscene. 
um, just before this happens. Uh, Joel does the right thing. He, he finds a rifle on like some scaffolding um, and he gives that rifle to Ellie to cover him while he's doing the combat. And as he leaves, he kind of acknowledges the fact that she did save his life. But anyway, here we go. Snail bomb has to kill three, which it does. Ignore all the noises. So far, so good. That shot through the window is pretty tough. What a throw. I'm gonna get you. Oh, he combusted. That's always fun. You have to pick mm. everything up here before the end of the combat. Oh, what Otherwise, a yes. what? that was superb. First if you don't pick down. everything up there, incidentally, um, <sighs> after that cutscene, it's all gone. Right, so um, Joel does take the rifle away from Ellie, but in return, he gives her a pistol. And he says it's for emergencies only, but it's great. There's like a, a fundamental change here in, in Joel's attitude towards Ellie. She's not quite so much a burden, more of an ally, but Ellie can now help us out. That's the important thing. Stupid chain is stuck. And she will. Hold on. Okay, also, after the fight was over, Ellie brings down the rifle and you can get two rifle bullets out of it. Now, normally you need to use that crate, but if you line yourself up just right, yep, yep, mm. re redo, just right, you can just climb up here. Don't need the crate. Of course, I can do that fight perfectly first try, but climbing something? Whoa there, I need at least two tries for that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, this next combat, sorry, not quite the next combat session. We're going to kill two guys at the top of uh, some stairs here, but we're going to move into a next area where there are actually seven enemies to take on. But what we will do is we will kill four stealthily, and once that has happened, the other three will despawn. But you cannot get an alert. Yeah, it's one of the enemy despawns that's allowed in this game because we're not doing anything weird to get it. We're literally just killing four enemies quietly and then the other two guys just kind of disappear. There is another way to completely despawn all the enemies, but we're not going to show that. Oh, man. <laughs> doing the quick turn in the corner thing. Let's just get to that bridge. Okay, uh, what do I need to do here? Switch to the bow. Enemies spawn once you get through the door, so we're going to swap out to the bow. Get our brick. I was sure they made it out of the city. Extract him. <laughs> And there we go. They don't. They don't follow you. Quick they can't restart. follow you. Yep. This. Yeah. This Quick restart to get Ellie close to us. Yep. Right next to us. Also, I've had it where I can't kill the last guy stealthy if I don't restart encounter. It's weird. All right, kill these guys quietly. Arrow didn't break. Nice. Okay, one thing I honestly am a little bit worried about, and I think I just might take the time loss here, is I need at least two shotgun shells for the sewers, and I'm running a little bit short. I only have one. I like to have three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take around an eight or nine second time loss and just get the shotgun shell over here. Because it's one of those things, if I only have like one shotgun shell for the sewers, not only can I not do the sewers fast, I, I really just don't know how to do it at all. So, marathon safety. Take the little bit of time loss. I should have gotten drops, like, a bunch uh, before this, but just not in the RNG cards. Okay, that military truck that killed those people, we have to run past it. We're going to do it in a very specific way. Get your brick ready. Hop through the very left of this window. Throw it at him. Swing at him and just run, man. Run. Not a scratch. Get this. Ow. All right. It is but a scratch there. We're fine. Swing at him. It has to be a swing. Otherwise, this guy will shoot you earlier. I'm gonna shoot once but miss. And then we're good. No black screen, no black screen, no black screen, no black screen. Good. 
Sometimes what can happen is the game can some glitch out there and then send you all the way back to the running past the truck. I don't know why. And that's happens. another occasion where Ellie can get the plus sign, but as soon as you get through that door at the bottom, you're fine. It will disappear. Uh, right, what's happening next? Okay, the brothers, Henry and Sam, who've come into Pittsburgh with a group looking for supplies, but they got ambushed um, and scattered by the hunters. So now they just want to escape. So we're going to follow them uh, somewhere safer. They've got a little hideout nearby where we're going to plan what to do next. So here they are, Henry and Sam. Or as I like to refer to them, Bill 2.0. Yeah. Really? They unfortunately don't help out that much. Maybe a little bit more than Bill, but overall just right next not one of their very area. helpful. They're, they're, they're pretty helpful to the story, I think. I promise so. <laughs> okay. Whatever, they're just, they're just kind of here. I appreciate that. Henry does have one particular area of expertise, and that's firing a gun at nothing. See you a bit later. All right, next enemy encounter. It's a little, it, it's, it's a lot complicated. There's three enemies on the bottom floor, and then two enemies on the top floor. If you kill the three enemies on the bottom floor stealthy, the top two enemies, they come walking out of their room. The, the door. It, it, you don't want that to happen. You want them to like sprint out of there so we can kill them a lot earlier. Uh, so we need to go loud on the bottom floor. And also Henry needs to climb up the front of the car because then he'll climb right up. If he climbs on the side of the car, he, um, he'll take forever. Here we go. We also have to question why there are five guys here guarding an area that's only accessible through that door. Don't question it. <laughs> All right, I won't. There's my shotgun shell. Uh, switch to the rifle. Henry, we, we don't we progress. It. All right, Not get, bad, get that. Timer. We don't progress too far into the area, so Henry, we kind of block Henry from going up the side of the car. All right, here we go. Now, because we went loud, these guys are going to sprint, but they need to get into position before they start attacking us, so we're going to come over here. He's dead. Henry is following right behind us. That's that's it. Through this, Through this door, restart encounter. Perfect Henry section. Very nice. You sure and I have my three shotgun shells. I'm the only one with the key, man. And where'd you get that? <sighs> There's a lot that like <laughs> sometimes the section just doesn't work. Everybody that section, not only do you have to kill the enemy fast, it's it's more about Henry manipulation. Oh. How old are you? All right, let's see. Um, there, okay. There. How old are you? Uh, cut scene coming up. Now, it turns out that Henry wants he and Sam to find and join up with the Fireflies, who are, well, in his words, out west somewhere. In the meantime, there is uh, an abandoned military radio tower not too far away from here. It's the rendezvous point for anybody from their group who survived. So our plan is to cross the Fort Duquesne Bridge the under the okay. cover of darkness, which is now darkness. Is Thank you. Uh, yeah. And mm. that's because it's uh, it's heavily guarded during the day. So that's what we're trying to do. Let's hope you know the way. This is yep. called Escape the City. Yep. All right. There's a searchlight. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine enemies here to deal with. So financial and here is where we like really con uh, re conserve our revolver ammo. We're gonna start out quietly, even though it doesn't look like we're doing it quietly, and then go loud on the guys up top. Okay, here we go. Okay. I'll follow your lead. Couldn't pick up the arrow. Yeah, I hear it. hide behind. Got him. Beautiful. <sighs> Absolutely beautiful. Ready. Now, something I didn't mention with the bow, on easy, normal, hard, and survivor, it's a one-hit kill when you're stealthing. When you're in the alert phase, you need to hit them twice with it. But on grounded mode, it's a one-hit kill no matter what. All right, check it out. 
Um, okay, what else? People like that pistol bullet and bonk on the head with the pipe. The reason that's possible is because of the increased damage on grounded mode. The pistol does more damage. Not melee weapons or your fists, but the guns. All right, this next area, there's a bar. Uh, it's actually the same bar from the beginning of Uncharted 3. Uh, Sully's bar, I, I think. There's even the Last of Us Easter egg on a newspaper on, on, the, on the table in that game. Um, but there's a glitch here. Not one caused by us, but just by the game. Maybe you've experienced this before, but once you enter, the camera wants to point to the back wall where the truck is, and you can't... As soon as you move, the camera just controls itself and points backwards. The way to get rid of that is to restart encounter as soon as you enter the doorway of the bar. It also resets the enemy AI. The strat here is I'm gonna use a Molotov and kill four people with one throw. That's the plan anyway. There we go. Not the easiest thing to execute. Oh, what happens? Sometimes that looks good. Perfect. Um, sometimes the that ice is it an ice cream thing? It is know. now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but sometimes it's like the upright uh, metal bars of that can almost be a magnet for the Molotov. The reason why we run very slightly to the left, oh. towards the back of that cop car, is it stops an animation of Joel uh, kind of stumbling as the truck comes through the gate. So we've got rid of that. Will we hit the canister? No, because he climbed he climbed over the thing in a jogging animation. All right, so what I was supposed to do Still there okay. was hop over the thing there in a sprinting animation, which it didn't do, and then shoot the propane tank on the bridge, and that skips Joel falling down. But if you don't hop over the thing in a sprinting animation and try and shoot, you're just going to die. So I had no yeah. choice but not to. So we had a we had a, a cut scene there. So the lower deck of the bridge was broken. Henry and Sam used the upper deck, which Keep is how they heel. crossed. But Ellie yeah. just decides that to escape, she's going to jump in the river, which is kind of really really swollen because of all the uh, the wet, the, uh, the stormy weather. So Joel jumps down after her. He does manage to grab her. Remember, she can't swim, but he's knocked out when he hits a, a rock in the water. So he comes he comes round on the uh, the riverbank downstream turns out they were rescued by henry and sam <laughs> but although it's like joel doesn't really see it that way he's still kind of furious at them for running off in the first place but anyway we've teamed up we're a foursome again now yep um we're all we're all good we're all happy yep as happy as one can be in the apocalypse <laughs> Um, okay, there's not much happening here for the first half of this area, so this is a good time to read, like, a lot of donations. Oh, that's great, because we have a lot of them in here. <laughs> so we have a $50 donation from So Engel saying, first time donor, and because The Last of Us is one of my all-time favorites, and it is so great to finally see it on SGDQ. Good luck, Anthony. You are an awesome speedrunner. Great cause to donate for, and hype from Germany. Hype. We have $25 from Paul K. Smash saying, had to donate for this Last of Us run. Finishing grounded mode was one of the hardest things I've ever had, I've ever done in video games, and seeing it destroyed this fast is amazing. Please take my donation. Quote, it can't be for nothing, end quote. Good quote. <laughs> We have a $5 donation from West Haven saying, $5 donation for Bill, my favorite grumpy old man. No high five for Ellie, because I know Bill wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> we have a $20 donation from Sushi Elemental saying, donating so Doctors Without Borders do not have to skip a med kit. Nice one. <laughs> We have a $100 donation from Beyond the Game saying, great to see you on GDQ, Ant. Best of luck on the run. $100 to save those frames. Thank you. We have a $410 donation from what? Ellie122. <laughs> Holy. Holy. <laughs> donation goes to my choice, Dave Joel, not the deer. And don't leave me hanging. Only me hanging high five. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think that's good. Alright, so... You gotta stand in the... If you fall in the water here, Henry takes his very sweet, precious time to help you back up. So... Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Like, aim yourself into the corner there. All right, we have our three shotgun shells. Whether or not I needed to grab that other one, I don't know, but I would have had to rely on a drop at Henry's or the searchlight. Probably wouldn't have happened. <clears throat> okay, there's a shorty up are, here. <sighs> Sorry, there's a shorty up here with to... a... What? A lag. A lag. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're, we're very close to the other really RNG section with uh, stalkers. First part is okay. First part is quite straightforward. Yep. This is much easier when we're next to each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Doing good, though. All right, shotgun him. Him. Ooh, that was clean. Very nice. We rely on those enemies for, uh... Um... Ammo drops. I knew I I know we're not gonna get any revolver drops because we're uh, yeah, I'm cool. we're at four, so we need to be at two or less to get a drop. But we didn't have any pistol ammo, so we got a drop there, so that was good. Um, and those enemies can only drop revolver or pistol. Now the second and last stalker area. Um, it's the reason that we picked up a brick in the bar instead of a bottle, because we're gonna do a thing where we. Like, bash the brick over a stalker's head. We, you can't do that with a bottle, only with a brick, and just run past. This is, I would say, like, the most RNG-heavy section in the game, if you can believe it. I, I certainly do. Here we go. And anyone to my right? Nope, there's one. You need to let go of sprint in order to do that. Looks nice. That should make it so they give up their chase. No! Maybe, 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 maybe. We're good. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Yep, yeah, there wasn't supposed to be anyone following us, but that's just the RNG in it. If I had done a quick turn, I may have been able to headshot it, but I will take that. That's where a quick turn actually does come in handy. Anyway, I was mentioning a shorty. Um, you could pick up, like, the shorty is like a pocket shotgun for the, your right holster. Um, you could pick it up, but again, he's just looking at it for like seven or eight seconds. You can pick it up in the next room. Right. Now this last area. It's... Kind of like a boss rush, almost. Basically, there can only be five infected in the room at one point, but as soon as you kill one, the game just spawns in another, and it will just be an infinite spawn of enemies until the section is over, which is on a timer. Sam and Ellie have to open this door from the other side. So it's really just run down the clock. And we're gonna do something, which again, looks like a glitch, but we determined it's not because of just how basic the game mechanic is to achieve it. Basically, you swing at a clicker as soon as it hops down, and then it freezes in place. To say that's not a glitch is saying you can't melee weapon a clicker, or an enemy for that matter. So if, one, if they hop down in the right way, I can pull this off. Because the game still recognizes them as there, but they don't move. Let's see. And they don't really, like, try and attack you until Joel says, Get ready. That it looks like the best RNG. There's one. There's another. Don't touch me. And freeze. <laughs> now just bait these guys back and forth, back and forth. Get them to stop moving. Back and forth. That one's having a seizure. Okay. Uh, Henry, little help. Where is he? There he is. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, he's getting a plus sign. Oh, I, I was going to say, you're asking Henry for help. Really? I know. 
All right, my R1 button got stuck there, so I got hit. That's all right. Clicker was just a little cold well, that there. That was okay, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I wish I didn't get hit there because up next is the military sniper. Fresh air. <sighs> and even on grounded with full health in most spots you get shot, you're just dead in one hit. Oh. So we're gonna do, we're gonna go a certain route so the military rifle doesn't really have an angle on us. But we need, we're more worried about the guys down below on the ground. So, this should be interesting to see. Maybe I should use one of my med kits. Hey. I have it just for this reason. Doing, though, man? I think I will. Because you just that never know. One, huh? I'm going to do it after I take the fall damage. One of our finest moments, but and Sam's pushing us, so that's good. Made it out. You'll see, I most likely won't take any damage, but I'm just going to go at full health. about you? How you holding up? Business as usual, right? When I was ascending, I took out a couple of infected by myself. Okay. Just picked up that med kit in the slums, yeah. just for something like this. I still, I will always love the video game logic of maybe getting shot like ten times and just wrapping up your right arm heals it. <laughs> I will never ever get tired of that. Get out. <laughs> Fucking sniper. Did you see where it came from? Somewhere down okay. the street. Here we go. Right now. Don't stay here. Thankfully, oh. not too much RNG in this section. Keep him busy. There's one thing. There's, no, there's just, just, there just is a couple right things. at the end. Yeah, easy. right at the end. Okay. It can be. Um, be careful. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Sometimes in the building at the far end, a guy can come through the door. Left trash can. Right of the stairs, I always wince when I get there. He can sometimes hit you. All right, will I get the alert sound or not? I do. That's actually what I want. Because then they all rush the left side, and this side is pretty open. So far, spotless. You actually want to get alerted there. It kind of opens up a path. Uh, sometimes just here you can get a guy come through. No, we're fine. Sometimes there was an enemy right here that killed me. The house is random. All right, not a scratch. Nothing. Very nice. See, like I said, when a run's perfect, you don't need a med kit, but... For GDQ, I will use one. Because again, I, I don't not, I'm not scared about getting hit by the military sniper. I'm worried about getting hit by the guys on the bottom floor. And without full health, that can... That stinks. All right, this is not target practice. You, you do have to hit them as fast as you can. Except for this guy. I'm gonna wait a little bit. About that much. And that In should... In this section, um, for anybody playing this game casually, um, in this section, if you see a guy wearing a helmet, don't go for a headshot. Nope, getting a headshot on enemies with helmets will just knock off the helmet. Like this guy. Hit the body. One more. All right, so the reason I delayed killing this guy is because then that makes it, I kill him, 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 and then there's a very fast enemy here, which I get him, him, and then him. If you kill him right away, an extra enemy spawns over here. Oh, there's that truck again. Very annoying. I don't think this guy made how it, How will Henry, how will Henry respond to this, I think? Uh, oh, I skipped, I skipped him shooting the revolver. Oh, well. He just, like, blind fires a revolver and there's nobody there. It's really funny. All right, I got to kill these enemies at a specific time. So they'll shoot him. And I wait for this guy to fire once. And then... There we go. All right, they'll kill one of these guys. All right, they killed him. I'm gonna get him, and that's the end of the fight. 
Good. He's gonna he's gonna peek one more time. One more time. And then Boop. So a couple of uh, runners will come out and attack our three friends down here. Uh, you have to kill one. Yeah, I'm okay. But then the whole area just gets attacked by it's, I think it's all runners. Can't really tell. They might be clickers as well. Probably oh, aren't. Right. Uh, you can use them as target practice if you want to, but you don't need to. You can use it as a pee break. Use it as a go and get some food break. Yeah, right. You just have to kill this one here. And yeah. That's it. Sam. A lot of damage here. Okay? I know Progressive yeah. Insurance bundles home and auto, but I don't <laughs> think there's any fix in that one. <laughs> Let's move. All right, yeah, this right here is just target practice. And I believe we're coming to the end of the bid war for high five, no high five. I have a feeling what won, but I think you can, uh, you can read off some more donations and uh, let us know what it's at. Sure. Um, do you, so we will go with the donations first. Um, okay. Let's see. We have a $100 donation from Codeman61 saying, here's a dad joke for The Last of Us fans. Why do Joel and Ellie prefer to use a touch screen instead of a mouse? Hmm. Answer, they are afraid to touch the clickers. <laughs> Thank you to all the runners and GDQ team. This week has been a blast. <laughs> we have a $100 donation from Tim Rock saying, hey, oh, thanks, Tommy. Y'all got a towel or anything? <laughs> God. Thank you, Tim. I mean, the memes. City, right? uh, um, do you guys want to know who won or what won? Yeah, yeah, brother? is a good point. I'm just ready to get there. Um, well, Nervous? probably to no surprise, the high five won. Um, blew it blew it out of the water. So well done. <laughs> All right. Nice. You guys want to? I'll give you a high five. All right. Uh, what right. What are we doing suddenly in the fall what section? Uh, the we all reached the radio tower, but it Same turned thing. out that Sam had actually been ah, bitten. Um, probably in that last section that we saw in the um, sniper part. Um, so he turns, uh, tries to attack Ellie uh, while Henry is cooking breakfast. Joel goes for his gun, tries to kill uh, Sam, but it's Henry who actually fires the shot that kills his brother. Uh, and in grief, he then turns the gun on himself. But for Ellie and Joel, it's double breakfast rations. So, <laughs> you know, every cloud. Oh. And here we are in Jackson. I never thought of it that way. But yeah, that's a little bit more food for Joel and Ellie. God. All right, there's just some environmental puzzles you gotta do here. All right, there's actually like some very specific stuff here, like to get Ellie to hop on the, the pallet here very quickly. You need to move it in a specific way. I know, on the fucking pallet. I think I got it. Yeah, I got it perfectly. It gets on really quickly. There are times where she would literally hop on there like six or seven seconds slower than that. And I may or may not, like, many months ago, have lost a world record by 0. 0.7 seconds. I remember that. The world record at the time was two, two hours, 50 minutes, and 30 seconds on the dot. And I ended up getting a 250-30.7. I still don't know how that's possible, but it happened. And I'm thinking maybe Ellie didn't hop on the pallet really quickly or something. Don't tell me you gave her a high five. Hey, All right. Be careful that thing. This is literally what you guys donated for. Teamwork. And that's it. The alternative is she makes you feel really bad about yourself. She's like, really? You're just gonna leave me hanging? All right, I see how it is. Just a high five. It takes like five seconds. God. I know That's I what you guys too. donated to not happen. 
though. I guess good for you. But that is around two seconds slower. Yeah, but I always say it's calmer if you do that. Uh, right. Uh, very quick cutscene here. We've found Tommy and his new wife. Maria. That's Maria ahead of us there. Maria. What the hell are you doing here? I thought I'd find you in Jackson. Yeah, they got quite the thriving uh, operation here going. They got horses and everything. No yep. way. Food, town, horses? and horses. Nice. And this guy. Try not to look at him directly in the Sorry, eyes. Right back. Oh, it's scary. Can I? Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, <laughs> ears. You ever ride one? I actually have. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the character models are very oh. PlayStation 3. I love you know, it. If you want, we can take him riding later. Scar you for life, that image. And his voice. There. Hey, thanks, Tommy. Hey, thanks, Tommy. No sweat. <laughs> All right, let's do a tour. Now, uh, can we get Maria to open the door? Yep, for the longest time, it was how do you solve a problem like Maria? Because she would literally stand right here, sometimes for a dozen seconds, and not open this door. Uh, but a guy named The Twister found out all you need to do is stand in her way, and when she stops moving, get out of her way. That counts as getting out of her way in terms of pathfinding. And she'll go for the door pretty quickly each time. Yeah, go ahead. Uh. It's my turn anyway. I'll go. I'll come with you. Um, we have a couple. Uh, uh, we have time for a couple more donations. Sure. Um, we have a fifty-nine dollar donation from Humphrey Three saying. I already paid for this game, this the then again for the remaster, the so only makes sense to pay one more time for Doctors Without Borders. Great game, even better runner, host, and commentary. Donation to host choice. I got something for you. We also have a $50 donation from Silent Pixel saying, congrats on the GDQ, Anthony, and good luck. Thanks, Pixel. Thank you, dudes. Hey, I love this. He's... I'm good. He's trying to show a picture of him and his daughter because they went I back to that. their old house last year. Okay. And he's trying to he's trying to give it to him. It's like a little faded, but it still looks pretty good. And before he has time to finish, if you mash square, he's just like, I'm good. I'm good. Good. It's supposed to be just like drawn yeah. out and he's just looking at it for a long time, but if you just mash X, just he just cuts here. Tommy off. I'm good. Come on. All right, let's see. What are we doing here? Uh, when I got my first 249 run, I messed this up. It was my biggest regret in the run. We need to let Tommy walk through the door pretty far and then follow him once he's just about to turn around to the right and he'll keep walking ahead of you. I messed that up and it lost me like seven seconds. All right, so all of the, the 50 supplements we upgraded in the elevator shaft in the hotel we upgraded Weapon Sway. We're finally going to use all the parts that we picked up to upgrade Joel's weapons right here. Don't pick up that bottle. We need to pick up one more thing of parts. And then what's great about this strat is you really don't lose any time by upgrading everything because they're still trying to, like, turn the generators on for this place. I would love to pet the dog, but that actually does lose a lot of time. You can pet the dog in The Last of Us. I mean, crouch walking because you great can only, is only walk here. <laughs> great thing is with part two is you can kill the dog as well. Yes, you can. Really nice. Well, not not just like a kind, peaceful dog like Buckley. Like the ones that are trying to bite your throat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can pet the dogs in part two, but I really wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> They wouldn't like that. All right, so All here right. we go. We're gonna upgrade right holster. Go. All right, let's do this. 96 parts, right holster. Okay, Clip capacity in the rifle. There we go. Now, this is a bit of an interesting one. Oh, um, actually, I forgot to swap my weapons. We did it, boys. 
Oh, whatever. I lose a little time. I lose a little time. It's whatever. We're going to go down here and crouch walk there. We're going to hang to the right side. As soon as he says, Free looks like you're out two million bucks. Looks like you're out two go back for this bucks. brick and walk towards Tommy. All right, switch to the rifle and the pistol. Let's go, Tom. And one of the... Well, it's my favorite cutscene. Okay. Just so you know. Uh, this is the point where uh, Joel tried to persuade Tommy to take over the transport of Ellie. By five, but Tommy refuses. And it's where we also learn, by implication, really, that at some point in the past, Joel roped his brother into a, a hunter why that killed me. lifestyle. God, that was odd. Uh, something Tommy couldn't live with. So they nearly get into a fight when the dam comes under attack. See, I don't know what so this guy's doing. Fortunate. Gosh. It's twice he got me. What I'm guessing is that bullet went What's through the railing when it hit me. There's a thing in this game. If a bullet travels through something like a window, gate, railing, stairs, something, and then hits you, it does like a bunch, double the damage. All right, at least that worked. I'm gonna heal here. Damn. Yeah, it's okay. Survived, though. Don't know what the health situation is like. Oh, there's the alcohol that I needed. Good. Right, Get his legs. All right, there we go. All right, I have absolutely no idea why I died there. That's, like, that's not really a thing. <laughs> I say that all the time in Very my runs. That's not a thing. Well, I guess I, I, I guess I should say it. Well, I just... In a run, that's never happened before. <laughs> uh, that the whole scene that we that we just skipped there. Uh, Tommy can see yeah. how close uh, Joel and yeah. Ellie are, so he, he understands why this whole situation is so difficult for Joel. So he changes his mind, he actually agrees to take Ellie's fireflies, but Ellie gets wind of it, she overhears the conversation. She wants to stay with Joel. Um, so, in protest, she's a teenager, come on, understandable. So, in protest, she's stolen one of the horses and uh, ridden off, so we've got to try and find her now. Yep. Also, for whatever reason, this is a weird spot to do it, but... The game refills all of your health right after that fight, even though there's not a huge, like, time lapse. This, this takes place, like, right after the fight. But yeah, it's like, um, you, you get all it's your like the back. overnight, it's like the overnight section, uh, before Escape the City, before the searchlight. You get no health back, even on easy mode. Yeah, and naps in a Naughty Dog game can, like, they can heal anything. So it's yeah. weird. Gonna... I'm gonna wait for him to duck. Oh, okay. Reload the El Diablo. I missed. All right. Uh, I think I messed that up. Did I? Yeah, I did. I don't know how that missed. All right, whatever. We'll do it again. never missed that before. This is still a relatively new strat, but still. Why is he over here? There. All I had to do was hit him. That's all. And that's all of them. What happens there is if you don't progress... Oh, I meant to be in my backpack. If you don't progress into the second half of the area, like up the hill here, uh, the enemies never spawn in. And I think it also has to do with killing those last two enemies back to back. So yeah, you throw the Molotov and that kills an enemy because he has armor on. I forgot to mention, but enemies with armor on are way more flammable. I know that's weird, but yeah, enemies with armor on are way more flammable. So that Molotov is gonna kill that enemy because he has armor on. And then you're supposed to hit that guy in the body with the El Diablo right after that. But I missed, and that ruined everything. All right, we're through, though. All right, the ranch. Your favorite cutscene, right? Mm-hmm. 
it's hey, it's close. It's really close. I still I still love the one in the dam. Uh, but so uh, uh, in the ranch here, Ellie confronts Joel. Uh, she learned from Maria what happened to Sarah. And uh, she tells him this isn't about a father-daughter okay. thing. Uh, he's the only person in, in her life so far who hasn't either died or left her. And she doesn't want it to happen again. Joel, unfortunately, it's a bit simple. He kind of misses the point, and he just reaffirms that she'll be with uh, Tommy from now on. I'm going over this way. Oh, my word, that hit. I don't know what's going on with the RNG today. Wow. With the headshot wow. registrations. Right. We're fine. Still just okay. swap Still out. Okay. Down, down, down. So, another cutscene. Uh, as they're riding out of that area, Joel realises that he was being a bit of an idiot, uh, and he's changed his mind. Tommy tells him that the Fireflies are at the University of Eastern Colorado, and that's where we are now. So, well, lock on the boulder. Okay. I, that wasn't an, a mispronunciation. Well, lock on. Well, we the grounds. Should be able to see most Will we the see it? Will we get a chance to look up? I don't know. Maybe. I gotta, I gotta yeah. make up, I gotta, I, I gotta make up for this gameplay in Windsor. Yeah. That sign that you can just see on the left there. It's getting chilly. Yeah, um, that's a giant ram. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it also says, well, lock on home rams or whatever Fireflies. it is. Yep. Seems like it takes quite a crew to run that operation. Okay. You think be other so, people my age? we've been picking up all these things, rags, alcohol, explosives, whatever. <laughs> We crafted our last Molotov in uh, the ranch area, and we're going to use it right here. Pretty rare. I don't have a shotgun. That's very rare. Hopefully, I don't need it. Let's see. Just gather them all. Fire. That is six dead runners for the price of one Molotov. Mwah. Beautiful. That. You just gotta run left, right, left, right, and back a little bit, and that gathers them all. All right, do I get any drops here? I would like a shotgun shell drop. A shotgun shell drop. I need. Oh no. There's one. Whew. Okay. <laughs> I needed one. I I, I, I would have swapped to one of my other guns, but yeah. This is all for the science lab. I need three revolver bullets and a shotgun That's shell fine. for the science lab. Here we go. Now the next part what about you? is. What do you want to be? What do we? What do we need? Uh, the yeah, university the, uh, dorm, like basement or something. Or just the dorms. There's what, five clickers and a bloater. We are going to use a whopping zero bullets, and I mean literally, we're going to use zero bullets. We need an empty gun because we want to get alerted right away, which draws the enemies away from the door that we exit out of. Um, firing a gun causes some inconsistencies in their, their pathfinding, but sprinting alerts them too late. So what we do is we fire an empty gun, and then once we take our first step in the sprinting animation, not only does it cause very... Uh... Uh... What am I trying to say? Not only does it make the section really consistent, hopefully, but we don't have to use any ammo. Here we go. We do need to use a bottle throw and a pipe. Here we go. I knew he was going to be there. Hopefully there's no one in my way, which there's not. That bloater is minding his own business over there with the other run uh, clickers. All right, they heard me good. there, but yeah, we are, right. We are good. You just got to deal with that one clicker in your way. Blo I can't even see the bloater. But good. We have time for a couple. Well, uh, I believe there's one more donation incentive, and that is to do the left behind any percent run after this run. 
So how is that going? And also, we have a lot of time for donations right now. Oh, um, everyone smashed that goal for oh. uh, for oh. The Last of Us Left Behind DLC. The goal was twelve thousand dollars, and yeah, it was it was met with um, five dollars to spare as well. So GGS everyone for making that incentive. All right, thank you. So after this, we're going to be doing the any percent run of the single player DLC to this game. Oh, it'll is... be fun. Me, me, me trying to do a, a story commentary on that. Yeah, <laughs> skip the whole thing. Let's <laughs> <laughs> try the game. Um, but yeah, it lasts five, five and a half minutes if done perfectly. You did it! But that's for later. Um, we do have a lot of, uh, maybe a couple minutes for some donations. Sure. We have a $25 donation from Sound Hunter saying, glad to see The Last of Us this SGD cube. High five Ellie for me and stay safe, everyone. Thankfully, we did high five her. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> Well, Bill used them as a form of defense. Maybe we have a $50 donation from Daniel177 saying, my favorite game on my favorite charity event with wonderful commentary. <laughs> happy I was here for this and happy to support. Right, thank you. We have a $60 donation from Decalzilla saying, The Last of Us made such an impact on my wife and I that we ended up naming our daughter Ellie. Oh. So of course no. we wanted to donate during this um, sleek, near-perfect run of one of our favorite games of all time. Why near-perfect, you ask? Because it's missing only one thing. Puns from Ellie's book, No Pun Intended, Volume 2. And that's two with, you know, two O's. <laughs> so, so here's one. A book just fell on my head. I only have my shelf to blame. Goodness. <laughs> Keep kicking some clicker butt and high-five our girl, Ant. Will do. Thank you. We have a $50 donation from Raichu saying, greetings from one of the first and proudest members of the ant colony. Incredibly happy to see The Last of Us at GDQ. Money goes to Dino's choice since Ant hates it when I start bid wars during his streams. <laughs> oh, great. Hello? Yeah, Raichu is um... one of my first viewers. Thank you, Raichu. Fireflies! That's good. <laughs> Mankind over here. We have a $20 donation from Jams160 saying, The Last of Us is why I bought a PS3 and a PS4. <laughs> Absolute legend of a game. Fantastic run to donate during. Thanks. Thank you, Ant, for getting this on the schedule. Keep up the great work you do at SGDQ. Thank you. Okay. Now, Science Lab. This is another area where we've been, like, kind of saving our resources for. A lot of areas like that. We had financial, we had the searchlight. This is another one of those spots. Because um, enemies are, like, stacked. They got shorties and rifles and El Diablos and revolvers. I don't even think they have pistols. Like, the weakest gun. It, they are just loaded. A and an axe. And an axe. Um, so, yeah. We absolutely, 100%, need a shotgun well, shell, three revolver bullets, a bottle, and a smoke bomb. Uh, you may have worked out, incidentally, that the Fireflies are not here, but we've, we're just about to find a voice recorder that says that they've gone to um, a hospital in Salt Lake City. But we're going to come under attack again. Who are these people? Get him! Get rid of him. Get a brick over here. Oh, no. Oh, sh Oh, did that hit the side? I don't think this is going to work, but I'll, I'll play it out, see what happens. Looks like it hit the side of the wall. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work. Nope. Oh, God, he is... Oh! No. Oh, yeah. Go, oh, yeah, go, go, okay. go, man, go! Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. What a clutch. What a clutch. And no black screen. That smoke bomb was supposed to go down to the second floor, or the bottom floor. Still worked. <laughs> I have no idea why. Oh gosh. Now that that makes you wonder if you need the smoke bomb at all. Oh yes, I do. Don't you even start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joel's know. that that that's a minor inconvenience there. The little hole in his stomach. What do you want me to do? Move. What? Move. <laughs> Oh, man. Joel? Mm. Oh. I don't need 
you to pull. Yeah, that was supposed to happen. Wait, you ready? Also, he magically gets One, ammo in his uh, two, revolver. Yeah! Oh. I went so fast that not even the sound effects are queuing in. Let's get to the damn horse. Which is always fun. <laughs> All right, Joel's a little shaken up by that. Just, just a little. Personally, I think he should just Go. toughen up a little bit, move a little faster here. That's, that's, that's just what I think. There's a little hole through your back and stomach. Probably punctured something vital. But just, just a little faster. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Come on, move. Even Ellie's just like, come on, just a little faster. I think he might need some antibiotics for that. Maybe. All right, All right this guy, you can't peek around the corner here until Ellie shoots at him first, but if you shoot him too early, like, nothing happens. Actually, for fun, I I'm gonna try and get it. Come on out. You wanna do this the hard way? Normally, you just shoot him in the head. Let's see. I just shot him in the head. And wow. nothing happened. <laughs> The strat, for real, the strat is to literally just wait half a second longer and headshot him. But I thought that would be funny. It, it, it doesn't register if you do it too fast. I'm okay. You're not okay, Joel. Come on. I, someone in chat said he should just take a nap. I know, man, if you've played Uncharted, you know, especially Uncharted 3, naps will cure just about anything. What will a coma do? Ah, uh, maybe. Oh my god, you could be a professional athlete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, what's coming up next? Uh, we're gonna get through... We are gonna get through the door. Um, oh, there's these two guys here. It's a funny little thing. You can't do anything. You can't shoot these two guys that appear. But as long as you aim, you can save... Second? Two seconds? Yep, right here. The strat is as soon as he falls over, just to aim. And that skips a bunch of dialogue. He's like, behind you, what? Ellie? It saves like three seconds. All right, next is my personal favorite chapter, both in speedrunning and uh, casually, is like the entirety of winter. So, Joel, you know, he needs to be taken care of by Ellie. Um, so as part of that we need food so she goes hunting for a deer and that uh, that's the first part in winter now the deer if you played the game before you know that normally you have to chase the deer around this semi open world and hit it twice and you can't get too close to it but what you can do instead oh I think we're taking that guy with us <laughs> we were walking over the bodies um you can actually hit it as soon as it spawns in, and that counts as a hit. So that is exactly what we're going to do. What the fuck? <sighs> oh, shit! So, for those unfamiliar with the story, we're going to start the uh, winter section, which is... I mean, the, the cutscene is mostly about killing a rabbit, and... Can you get on? Wondering if Joel survived. But yes, this is all about killing the deer. It's oh, this fish, I don't even know how to explain this uh, opening shot. Yeah, let me get it first and then I'll explain it. Whew, okay. Where'd you go? You're not supposed to do this, incidentally. Got him. Gotcha. Nice. Nice. nice birdie. That's a lot of fun when you get a world record pace up to here, and if you miss it once, the run's basically over. So that's a lot of fun. But yeah, you can hit it right there, and as a result, you can get really close to it the second time. Now, don't stand in front of it, otherwise he'll run in the opposite direction. Hold it steady. Oh. And there we go. Take that, Rudolph. All right. <laughs> All right, now for what is probably the hardest, but is definitely my favorite enemy encounter, is the coal mine fight. 
Dino, why don't you set it up for us? Yeah, well, we're just about to meet David and his friend James. Um, Ellie agrees to kind of trade the deer for some medicine. So we know that Joel is alive when she says that. So James has been sent off to go and get that, some antibiotics, which will be in exchange for the deer. But as usual, we're just having a nice conversation and um, infected arrive. Yep. So this fight, David, who is also played by Nolan North, if you can believe it or not, this is Nathan Drake. Keep them out. <laughs> All right, the key is to use all our rifle ammo before we use okay. our arrows, because we don't get arrows back, but we can get rifle ammo back. Make every shot count now. I've done this before. Right. I'm manipulating David this entire time, by the way. So I killed these two enemies when I was at zero, so they each dropped one. And David gives me six when I get down to zero. He dropped two, thank God. All right, that was perfect. Did this one drop his arrow? No, whatever. Help me with this thing. You don't need to help him with that thing, by the way. All right, there we go. And we can use We're rifle ammo on all the these guys. Oof, thought I missed. Nice. Right. Two, three. All right, clicker. Good. <laughs> We're good. We're good. Absolutely spotless. And I get a bunch of my arrows back. Screw. We're getting out of this room. <sighs> this way. Whew, I'll be honest, heart, heart was racing there. That's a tough fight. Yeah. Cover the stand. Everything down to the ammo that they drop is like routed. That arrow broke, that's all right. And if you enter this area with zero rifle bullets, David gives you three. Follow me through here. Okay. And you can knife you ahead of him here, which gives a very funny side effect. Otherwise, you're just really stuck behind him. Okay, come on, David, hurry up. And... Bloop, bloop. <laughs> It's really funny, people who play this game for the first time really struggle. Well, they struggle in the fights, but they struggle right here specifically. All you gotta do is hop down here. The route, the route really could not be more direct. Yep. And then just climb up. That's it. Right, another empty chamber trick here. Yeah, so sometimes what can happen is a clicker can glitch its way into this area. It has to do because we sprint right away after we get separated from David. So firing that pistol into that corner prevents a clicker from, I guess, climbing over the, or like walking over the wall and getting into this area. And I don't hear one, so we're, we're okay. Be quick. Keep your okay. I know. There's a clicker to my left here. I'm just gonna run past it. And he's stuck on the railing. That's good. Clicker! Angry clicker. You can't get me. <laughs> Frustrated clicker. Okay. Coal mine part two. Here we go. Like the horde of infected. Here we go. So, but, any of you guys in chat, have you spent more than two hours on this section? Because I have. Yeah, no shit. That triangle prompt was very specifically timed, so this fight starts nine seconds earlier. David decides to practice his moonwalking. That's always appreciated. 
in a time like this. All right, here we go. I need quiet. <laughs> I need silence for this fight. See anything? Here we go. Perfect. So doing it that way makes that fight, that part of the fight, end as fast as possible. You hear that? We're on the roof. I know. Good. Whoa. Come on, come on. I think that arrow hit David. <laughs> breaking. All right, that one didn't break. Good. There come more. Oh, no. I only have four. It could be bad. We'll find out later. I would like more than four arrows, but whatever. I gotta remember there's a rifle bullet over here. All right, good. Um, I was puzzled by that arrow. I didn't think it broke. Yeah. I'm good on rifle ammo, though, so I don't need that extra arrow. Oh, a uh, bloater. Giant bloater. And he's dead. As long as you hit that bloater below the knee, it's history. It is bloater history. Uh, right, what are we doing now? OK, so it doesn't look like it. But David actually knows, well, he kind of knows who Ellie is. Because it was his men who were at the science lab earlier on. And they got back, they evidently described the man and the girl when they got back. But he still lets Ellie go once she's been given the medicine. Uh, <clears throat> she returns to Joel, gives him the antibiotics, falls asleep. Um, and when she rape, uh, when she wakes, it's clear why David let her go. He's used her to track down Joel. So she's taken the horse here, and she's going to run away, hoping that they will chase her and forget about Joel. And that ends up working. Yeah. What are you waiting for? Shoot her! But David said... Fuck David! Shoot her! All right. There's one little trick here. There's a route to go so you don't get shot, but you need to pull off a little trick here. They kind of need to climb onto the horse once, but if you turn the camera, they hop on and then hop right off. And as long as I go a certain route, they will not shoot me because this is the important part about this area. Any damage Ellie takes right here gets carried over into the next area. A nap does not refill Ellie's health. So on Grounded, it's very important to not take damage here. All right, now we needed to end that fight with a certain amount of rifle and... Uh, rifle ammo and arrow amount. Aw, uh, bye, Callus. Bye. That's a lot of damage. I think that horse has become horse, derve, derve, horse, horse, derve. No, it's all right. Forget it. Carry on. <laughs> OK, you needed to end that previous fight with a certain amount of ammo or rifle ammo and arrows, because we actually have to do a, st a section quietly, believe it or not, as much as we're running through a bunch of areas. Okay, here we go. Four arrows. How many of our guys were killed there? One? Yeah. I think I'll. You better be going in the. Oh, yes, he's okay. What happens? Get him. I'm gonna. Let's see if I can get the ragdoll. Perfect gameplay, perfect RNG, and ragdoll to. No, 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 he's, no! he's going. There he goes, yeah, there he goes. There he goes. Oh, a little Bye. bit. He, he, like, flops around a lot. That, that was a bit underwhelming. Oh, well. That's, al that's almost like post-financial district part two, isn't it? Yeah. 
at least the at least the section went well. That was good. Yeah. Oh, uh, we have our rifle ammo. We only need one arrow. Okay. We're doing well. Here's something fun you can do. You can do this at home right now. Hold down sprint when you're leaving here. And you just have to let technically go. Technically a glitch, but it's a technically, technically, but it is slow. It is slower than Ellie's sprint. Yeah. So it doesn't do yeah. anything. It's purely visual. <laughs> this is always a fun thing to show off. Just that one pipe, too. Doesn't work anywhere else. Okay, again, it's important we don't take damage anywhere. Because any damage we take gets carried over the next section. That guy turned around. That's good. Cover the ground! Make sure she's not hiding somewhere over here! Alright, that was a slow climb, but the crouch before I started climbing made it so they won't spot me. Alright. Arrow this guy. I'm gonna arrow this guy. Where are you? There you are. Just Perfect. in case I miss one of my shots. Nice. Okay. And good old David turns up and captures it. Now, Ellie wakes in a kind of improvised prison cage to see James. Uh, chopping up a human body because David's group survive at least partly through cannibalism. Now, James disappears. Um, David arrives with food and he tries to persuade Ellie to join his clan, but she refuses. Um, uh, now, she tries and fails to grab the keys to that the David has around his waist. Um, but he stops her, but she breaks his finger in the process. And he leaves, but not before hinting that she will right. suffer the same fate as the body on the table. And we switch back to Joel. Yep, we're going to get Ellie. And he's magically feeling better after an impalement and a little penicillin. Because video games. Because walk it off. Yep. Right, that she? strat's actually easier to do on Grounded because of the one-hit kill with the revolver. Um, all right, this last enemy right here, he... If he's in the middle of the street, I have to kill him. If he's taking cover behind the crates, we're good. He's in the middle of the street. Okay. If he takes cover behind there, I can just run with him. But he would have tried to shoot me. That bullet just triggers in dialogue. Doesn't usually hit you. Okay. Uh, uh, Joel Joel interrogates these two guys. Yeah, because he, he's better than these two. He can do it. Right. Uh, Joel interrogates these two guys to find out where Ellie is. And we then see her being woken up by David and slammed onto this like, butcher's table that we saw James at earlier. But she gives him a bite and gets him to look, uh, gets him to look at the bite marks to give him the idea that he's infected. And while he's distracted by that, she grabs the machete, kills James, and she's now managed to escape. Yep. And now, in the context of the story, Ellie doesn't know where she's going. I know where she's going, but she, she doesn't. She's just trying to get away. And this is all pretty specific. I need a bottle for the last room. What the hell? And to get alerted. Son of a bitch. I have to get alerted there, because that's going to empty the enemies out of this next area. There we go. I got alerted there yesterday. Very good. No more enemies in my way. Perfect. Another... Another, another essential restart and counterpoint here. Actually, I'm going to do the new strat. So oh, there's right. something okay. weird okay. that happens here. Maybe you've experienced it. We allow it in this category because we have absolutely no idea why this happens. But as of right now, I'm pretty sure the game is broken. I have no idea why. But what's going to happen is I'm going to hit triangle. She's going to take a couple steps back. And David is spawned outside. I, I didn't do anything to get that. I have no idea why. So to fix the area, we restart and counter. But as a little bonus, 
with the restart encounter, you're able to keep whatever you have in your hand, even a gun, but shooting him doesn't do anything. This is like a three or four month old strat. So we get to keep the bottle. And on no, easy mode, infected. you can throw bricks and bottles at him. No one that's infected fights this hard to stay alive. I gotta get those keys. There's stab number one. Like the enemy, like David here is programmed to react to bricks and bottles. It's gonna be all right. So, boom. And then, run, little rabbit. Three. And that's that. There's also an easy way to do this without the bottle. I've been doing that for like five years. This one's still new, but yeah. All right, back to Joel. But what, if you're playing more casually, what you can do in that section is as soon as Ellie jumps into that restaurant, do just do a restart encounter and it will guarantee that David um, appears where he should do. Oh, I, I don't know if this is going to work. Please miss me. He does. Get him. They should just clear out. Yeah, he, he shot at me once. Perfect. We good. That was a really good winter overall. Whew. All right. We call this next room the pinata room. <clears throat> Let me do it first and then... Perfect. Oh, Christ. Yeah, there's a bunch of hanging, frozen human bodies, really? which you're supposed to very, very, very slowly walk through. But if you time a swing through there, you, you can just zoom past it and sprint through the door. That's not a, that's not a morbid name for the room or anything. That's the strat. <laughs> that's the strat. Okay. Uh, cut scene coming up after this little boss fight. Well, it's hardly a boss fight. All Ellie has to do here is reach this machete. But once she does, um, her killing of David is, well, they frenzied. It's like she's, it's like she's completely lost control. Um, Joel arrives and pulls her away. Now, you remember right at the start, yeah, at the okay, opening cutscene where I said uh, when Joel no put Sarah to bed, he says, uh, good night, baby girl. Well, here, Joel arrives just I after know. Ellie has killed just David and she's kind of, I don't know, completely broken down. And he just sort of embraces her and says, oh, baby girl. And it's that point where you realize that Ellie is kind of, I don't know, a surrogate daughter now. This is where the bond is absolutely complete between both of them. Pity we can't play the scene. We don't, we don't have time to play it, but it's one of the best cutscenes of the game. Right, Ouch. so we're into spring. Yep, spring. Last oh, chapter it said in the spring game. On, it said spring on the screen there. I didn't need to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this last, uh, it's, it's kind of weird, but the first chapter, Summer, literally la is like no. two-thirds of the run, and yeah. then Fall, Winter, awesome. Spring is, is the other are. third. Kind of weird. There's like 17 more minutes left to go on the run, and really all that's left is running past a giraffe, uh, okay, like and this, the porch. tunnel and the hospital. Pick away my and then that's pretty much it. Yeah, once we're done with this whole thing. The tunnel <laughs> will be great watching for the people who... You really like that. Uh, maybe just played Please this say, game casually and really struggled with that section, because what do you have in the tunnel? You, you have three, at least three, sorry, there's three bloaters. Um, Lord knows how many um, clickers and runners. Yeah, there's got to be like eight runners. Five clickers and three bloaters or something. It's brutal. You can kill them all, especially if it's easy mode. That's a lot of fun to do. Grounded probably won't have a lot of supplies heading in there, much like I do now. So with this amount of supplies, 
How am I gonna make it through the tunnel? Maybe we cut through here, huh? Well, you'll find out eventually. <laughs> How am I gonna do it? Well, we could use that ladder. Here we go. No, really, how am I gonna do it? I kind of forget. Oh, right, that thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, don't, don't stop worrying me, come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie? What? The ladder. Come on. It's a very sweet strap, though, guys. Um, watch it carefully, because it's not actually that difficult. You've just got to remember precisely what route you're going to take. Yep. A little right. bit of RNG right at the end of it, because you will, hopefully, you will throw a brick or a bottle at one runner at the end, but he might not be there. So you just have to be ready for that. Oh, my God. Ellie! Ellie! I think we actually have time for a couple donations. You gotta see this. Sounds Where good. We have a $25 donation from GUV saying, great to see Ant running The Last of Us at GDQ. Shout out to Dino, you rock. Thanks, Gov. Thanks, Gov. <laughs> oh, Gov, sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have a $250 donation mm. from Neko25 saying, there goes my savings for the best event on one of my favorite games. Thanks a lot for this beautiful run I can share with my wonderful girlfriend discovering the GDQ. It may be her first, but thanks to you all, it's far from being her last. Good luck, Anthony, and give that high five to Ellie. Spoilers, we already did. <laughs> <laughs> um, a little cut scene here. Uh, right, so Joel says to Ellie, we don't need to do this. We don't need to go to the Fireflies. Oh. They can just turn back, um, return to Tommy's place. But, there's no but Ellie says, look, you know, come on. We've come this far. Let's just get it over with. But we're okay. going to carry on. Yep, I would have, I would have turned, if it was me, I'd just turn Clean back. This up. Yeah. But, but it isn't. So, you know, what can I do? Yeah. But could you also hear, heal a bullet wound by wrapping your arm in gauze? Um, I've tried it, and back. no. How so? <laughs> I tried it. <laughs> there, I can just picture you trying it. Everywhere you look, just saw families torn apart. All right, here comes the tunnel. We need two arrows, that bottle. I have no idea why I have so much pistol ammo. I really haven't a clue. Yes, it was. I can't imagine losing someone you love like that. No, that's a head scratcher. Losing no idea. Anything that you know. Maybe the pistol, t like, maybe the pistol took a nap or something. That's okay, Ellie. Hey. Second arrow. We need two arrows for the for the tunnel later on in the tunnel. That's gonna be a hard strat to explain. Let's get past this area first. Okay. This time it's gonna be different. Bunch of clickers, bunch of runners, even a bunch mean? of bloaters. Here we go. Do they need to trouble us in any way? Maybe. <sighs> okay. okay, still have to get it right, though. Yep. It's, this is simple in principle. So we fire that bullet. That doesn't alert them, but it allows us to sprint. We climb up here so Ellie doesn't get a plus sign, because that is a problem. Now we run. Hopefully this guy doesn't touch me. Because if he touches you, he'll just insta-grab you. He's kind of a glitched runner in this area. No wind-up, no nothing. All right, is there a runner here? There is. Yeah. The bloater's where he should be. The clicker's walking away. Have to get the lock on with that smoke bomb, incidentally. Yeah. It's looking nice. Perfect. Mm. Perfect. Yeah, they're all back there. We're good. All right, now pay attention to the supplies that we have. Just like the high school, we're gonna do that thing again. Look at my smoke bomb and my pistol ammo. Restart encounter. Let me explain why this is allowed again. 
We got our stuff back that we just used. We're good. That's We're only good. possible yeah. on grounded. The reason being, that bloater, maybe he was a football player in his previous life, but he has a really, really good aim. And what can happen is he can throw his stuff over the truck and it can hit you on the other side. And on grounded, all it takes is like two seconds being consumed by that stuff to die. And if you die while on the other side here, you get your stuff back anyway. It's, it's a side effect of grounded. It can happen in the high school, the science lab, and here. Only those three spots. And technically, the hotel, but that's a very rare instance. Specific only to grounded. Like I said, it's a side effect of being a DLC difficulty. They never patched it out either. Oh, this is gonna be fun to explain. Let's get it first. All right, how would you explain this one? Well, let's start with the basics here. You cannot boost Ellie over here when the clicker is alerted on the other side. You can boost her over normally, but then the clicker attacks her, and you, um, you just kill it. And if the clicker is just alerted on the other side, you can't boost her over. But what you can do is alert the clicker on the other side, the triangle prompt remains for another half a second, and if you hit it, this clicker is a little, uh, well, he's friendly. He doesn't really mind our presence, which is great. And all that's doing is allowing us to sprint. That's all it is. Otherwise, it's a very, very slow jog. That's the best way that's I can word it. That, incidentally, um, that happens in the basement in the hotel as well. Uh, when Joel is swimming underwater, if you use your X button, it's a little bit like sprinting. Yeah, it's like underwater sprinting. If you're constantly, like, ascending from the water, um, uh, it's the, the fastest swimming animation. Okay. Also, I should mention, I should have mentioned this before, but I'm actually running this game unpatched on the original 1.00 version because on Grounded, the, like, the later patches end up, in my opinion, negatively affecting enemy encounters. They do different things, they're placed in different places, and some other side effects too, like you can't sprint after the hotel basement. Some negative side effects, in my opinion. But it's not separated on, like, the speedrun leaderboards. It comes down to personal preference. But yes, I'm playing unpatched right now. Okay, one more strat with Mr. Clicker here. We need to get him into this room so we can sprint the rest of the way. So we do that by, at the last second, firing an arrow. And he is gonna come pay us a visit. Here, boy. Good, Clicker. Damn ladder broke off the wall. Now what? See, he's friendly. I'll figure something out. This nice company to have. We need him to stay in this room so we can sprint the rest of the way up there. If you don't get any of these, it's literally like 20 seconds slower. Good clicker. Which sound which sounds surprising, but there's you know, there's a fair bit of traversal here. Given this uh, crossing the uh, the ladder thing and the stairs. So yeah, if you can sprint all of this way rather than walk. Big difference. Oh yeah. And that it may it may have seen seemed like long and complicated, but that's literally all we use that clicker for. All right, one more section, the hospital, okay. with fireflies. Uh, Dino, why don't you explain what happens? <clears throat> yeah, so uh, at the end of this section, a little bit of a spoiler alert because we're a, a minute or so away from it. Um, they're going to try and cross this bus in the water, and it won't work. Uh, and ultimately, Ellie is going to get thrown into the water, and she... Well, she drowns. Not drowned as in dead, but she's unconscious. Uh, as Joel tries to revive her, 
he's knocked out by uh, a Firefly soldier. A couple of Firefly soldiers have arrived, have, uh, arrived just at the precise moment, and he wakes up in the hospital to see who other than Marlene. Now, he and Ellie both believe, there's a little conversation that happens back in the uh, university, that Ellie would just be giving a blood sample, but it turns out that it's a growth on her brain that's of interest to them that they can use, but harvesting it is going to kill her. Which is what Marlene basically says to Joel. So, and, and, <laughs> and he's she... not going to accept that. So Marlene tells the soldier that's there in the room with them, this guy called Ethan, to march Joel out of the hospital. Uh, obviously, that's not that is not Joel's plan. So he kills Ethan and goes to... But he knows where the operating room is, so he's going to go and try and save Ellie. Yep, now these guys all have armor, assault rifles, El Diablo shorties. Toughest challenge there is. That's what we have our one arrow for. Got to hit him in the leg. Okay, right, this is a fun strat to do. Three enemies coming through. Distract them. Hey man, I heard something. Oh no. Mm. Yep, I missed the fire extinguisher. Oh. Uh, wow. The first time I've first time I've missed that in a run. It's yeah. a lot easier if I have like an extra shorty shell or something, but I think I, I dragged the reticle over. Yeah. Well, that first part was it so good, it's worth a second look, so. <laughs> It just looked, yeah, I was going to say with the shorty, you get a much bigger reticle to play with, don't you? Yep, that's grounded, though. <laughs> Haven't seen too many instances of how brutal it is, but that's grounded. There we go. No, no, no. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Once you're inside the fire extinguisher stuff, you're okay. You're good. All right, if I get alerted on the top floor, this is going to be bad. I don't usually struggle with that, man. Come on. Now, as you guys may have seen in the uh, the bus station as we got to Salt Lake, Ant has used everything that he's got. So there's no option here to health up, craft anything. Yep. Hopefully just no alert here. Good. Perfect, yeah. Good. Perfect. All right. That yeah, was that my was mistake. I, I dragged the reticle way too far. All right, that's that. All right, let's go get Ellie. To be respectful. Uh, let's not mention this guy's name. I won't make it. You have to kill him. You have to kill the surgeon. Those two are optional. Shut the hell up. I got you. All right, now just run to the elevator, and then Jackson, and then that's it. Um, any last Sorry. minute, any last minute donations, real quick? Sure. Uh, we have a um, twenty-five dollar donation from Mikey saying. It's pretty late here in Germany, but I can't stop watching. The Last of Us is my favorite game, and Ant and Dino are awesome. Thanks to SGDQ for putting it on the schedule. We also have an anonymous $100 donation saying, I couldn't find the time to finish my replay of The Last of Us 2. Uh, uh, sorry, hang on. <laughs> couldn't find the time to finish <laughs> my replay of The Last of Us Part 2 uh, before Part 2 came out. Watching this counts, right? My apologies. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. All right, Dino, what happens in this cutscene? Right, so Marlene is there as Joel gets out of the elevator here. Um, she she kind of pleads with him to hand Ellie over, but no way. Um, he kills her and escapes with Ellie. Now, she's going to wake up in the car as they're driving away, and she asks him what happened. Obviously, he can't tell her about Marlene, so he, inv he invents this story about the Fireflies having uh, given up on finding a cure. Um, there's a cutscene that we won't see at the end of this, 
where Ellie challenges Joel about that story. She asks him to swear that what he said uh, was the truth. Right. And he does. He says, yeah, OK, it was. Yeah. So we are about a minute away from time. Yep, when the last cutscene starts, that's where that's where time is. Now, because you guys hit the left behind any percent donation incentive, there's a um, that run has to be done on the latest patch. So right after we're done here, I need to I need to patch the game, and then we can start uh, the next run, which will only last five and a half minutes. But you guys donated for it, which I very much appreciate. Well, maybe in the meantime, I can just say a little bit of what uh, Left Behind is about. Better yeah, way. sure, go for it. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, Left Behind is the DLC, um, originally for the PS3 version. It's free on the, uh, the remaster. And what it does is it covers the... Well, it covers two, uh, two time periods. One is when Ellie is trying to... Oh, real quick, find... sorry. Oh, Three yeah. seconds sure. and time. GG's. Woo. Oh, let me... Nicely done, bro. Thank Nicely you. Done. 253... 40... something? With safe strats, that is exceptional. Yeah, that was good. I was... Real quick, what was... All right, uh, let me patch the game real quick. Just need to uh, connect internet again. Okay, why are you doing that? Um, yeah, Left Behind was the DL one of the DLCs for the PS3 version, free on the remaster, PS4. It covers two timelines. One is the period when Ellie is trying to find um, medicine to take care of Joel after he was impaled um, in winter. The second part of it is her is what happened in the run-up to her getting infected three weeks before the, the beginning game. So she's with uh, her friend Riley. Um, they're e essentially, they are exploring a mall in um, Boston. I can't say Boston. Can you say, uh, say Boston for me? Boston. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I live in Jersey, but Boston. No, you live in New Jersey. New Jersey. You're right. You're right. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're good to go, right? You don't have to change the layout or anything? I believe we're good to go. All right. Good. So, like Dino said, single player DLC to The Last of Us is left behind. Now, normally, we're going to do this on easy mode. Now, normally, uh, your first playthrough. Uh, uh, Real quick, your first playthrough will take about two to two and a half hours. A glitchless run takes around half an hour. Any percent, any percent, oh boy. <laughs> and again, timer starts when I skip the first cutscene. It shouldn't take long. I did this for AGDQ earlier this year in January. That was a lot of fun. Uh, so let's do it again. All right, timer starts in three, Two, one, go. Oh, thank you. All right. Normally, you got to go up the stairs. All right. This is any percent, by the way. Normally, you go up the stairs and progress in story stuff, blah, blah, blah. But we're going to go over here. And over here. That should work. If not, I have to quit back to the main menu. And the area is glitched. Nice, I got it. All right, so there are six chapters in this game. We're obviously in chapter uh, one right now. <clears throat> and we're in chapter five. Just, just like that, just, just like that. Now we just need to get to the back of the store. I'm just holding forward, a little bit upright, and X. And one thing I have to say, Anthony, the emotional impact of this any percent run is absolutely zero. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, this is the store you enter at the end of Chapter 5. 
coincidentally, there's some stuff here. You need it to spawn in on the table, like to the right of it in order to get past. All right, this is honestly the hardest part of the run. What was that? Running past Stitch these four him. guys. Stitch him up. All right, a couple didn't hop down. Someone hop down, thank you. Oh, inclines. Ooh. We're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Ooh. We're fine, come on. Yeah, okay, we're good, that's okay. Good. Trying to stab someone on an incline is not fun. <laughs> okay, we're good. This is easy mode, Ellie can take a punch. All right, now we're in the final fight of the game. We... Got a med kit from a helicopter and everything. All right, eight enemies here, I believe. We're just gonna do the glitch again. Eight enemies despawned. Now we can't do the glitch right away again. Otherwise you soft lock the game. We need to kill five enemies and that will spawn in infected. Then we can do the, the, the glitch again. Nope, good. Yep, yep, come on, we're okay. We're okay. I have extra health. I have extra, oh my. Come on, just need headshots. There we go, there we go. All right, one should be climbing up here. All right, just kill one more guy. Maybe over here. There we go. There we go, you just need that dialogue to trigger in. Do the glitch again. And I don't like that long loading screen. That's not a part of the mm. run. Mm. Any day, Naughty Dog. Any day. There we go. Wow. You know, we have another I... two minutes of running, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> I really had visions of blue screen then. <laughs> okay, so where are we? Who's this? What's going on? I, I don't know. We skipped all this. But Dino, I guess you can say what. Like the Cliff Notes version of what's going on? Yeah, lots of things happened. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So this is Riley, Bill on the right. We've been, we've been through some real adventures together. Mm -hmm. it's, been, it's, it's, been a, it's been a blast. We're basically, this is a different mall, by the way. We are in another mall, but this is a different one, which takes place three weeks before the events of the main game. Whereas the mall we were in before it takes place after Joel gets impaled in the science lab. This one, we're just trying to make our way out of here. Just follow the linear path. Yeah. The, uh, the winter part of this is in Boulder. Uh, pr well, presumably Boulder. This is back in Boston. Hmm. That looks like it hurts a little. That's a lot of damage. Up the stairs. The scaffolding. All right, just That's keep following out. Riley. I can't do all over again. Infected. Oh, they're behind us too. Go 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 go. They're getting closer. So this part's pretty much on the rails, but um. Real quick, I just want to say, again, thank you to Games Done Quick for accepting There's Last of Us. Uh, again, I've been wanting to get this in for a very long time. Five years I've been trying. So for, the, for it to finally get in, uh, I'm very, very grateful. So thank you to everyone. And um, yeah, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of other exciting things going on, but I'll wait till the cutscene's over. We have about like 15 seconds left in the run here. Oh, by the way. You don't have to, you don't have to hit square. All right, time's coming up. Right about now. Ugh. Sore throat. Ah, mm. oh, thank you, thank you. What was Jeez. the time? Thank you. Looks like a 546. That's good. Blow, blow six minutes. That's good. Uh, the records for that's five minutes and 19 seconds. Crazy. And my record for grounded for the campaign is two hours, 49 minutes and 53 seconds. 
Um, but yeah, again, thanks everyone. I'm Anthony Caliber. That's Dino. Want to say anything, Dino? Yes. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, seriously, G you guys at GDQ, um, these are difficult times that we're going through at the moment. I don't think people really appreciate what you guys do for mm. nothing behind the scenes to make sure that all of these streams can happen, all of these runs can happen. You know, all of the uh, tech checks that you do, um, helping people out with their setups, you do it for nothing. You do, you give your own time. Um, I don't think people realize just what you do. Yep. And I'm so grateful for everything. Not, you know, it's, um, it's, a, it's a tough job. And also the fact that you're doing this online, you're kind of working this whole thing blind. You've never had to do it this way before. Yeah, um, it's I'm, very tough. I'm, I'm full of admiration for you guys. Yeah, well said, Dino. I feel the same way. Um, uh, so again, I'm Anthony Caliber, full-time Twitch streamer. Uh, we recently set up the Last of Us speedrunning Discord a few months ago, and with The Last of Us 2 being released, we're all starting to route that the best we can. A lot of exciting things are happening. Uh, so yeah, head on over there if you want to learn Last of Us Left Behind or anything part two. Uh, we'd love to have you. So again, thank you guys all very, very much. Well done, and GG's Anthony. Those were some amazing runs for The Last of Us, Grounded, Glitchless, and Left Behind, Any Percent. I was your host, Mark Foria, for these runs, and we still have some awesome donations coming in. We had a $100 donation from Jasmine216 saying, so excited to see this incredible game in the lineup this year. Good luck on the run, and yay high five. Donation going to the bonus game re3 remake we also have a 75 dollars donation from kyle g saying did not remember when sgdq 2020 was starting double surprised as it's already started and the last of us is being played a game i recently completed to get ready for part two great tom commentators and good luck to all the runners looks like we'll be going to a quick twitch ad and that will be it for me. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for upcoming Freedom Planet Carol Any% speed run by Revolution, and Lizstar will be your host for that. This is Mark Foria signing off, and have a wonderful rest of the day, folks.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2020 online, powered by Twitch. I am your host, Listar, for the coming block. I hope you're excited and ready for Sonic Block. Well, technically, there's another game before it. Before we get to that, however, let's read some donations. We have uh, $100 from Jasmine216 that says, so excited to see this incredible game in the lineup this year. Good luck on the run and hi yay high five. Donation going to the bonus game RE3 remake, and that is the Resident Evil 3 remake bonus game coming up. If you're looking for something to put your money towards, that's a good idea. And uh, we'll be right back after this quick word from our sponsors. Hey, OmniGamer here, and my book Speedrun Science is the complete guide to speedrunning's process, history, philosophy, and so much more. Check it out at Fangamer.com. Welcome back. Let's read a few more donations here. The Real Jonathan donates $25 and says, I found more money in my pocket. Here, take it. Much appreciated, friend. Thank you so much for raising money for an incredible cause. All right, friends, we are ready for an interview. We have an interview coming up uh, for the Sonic 1 and 2. Uh, it's Spike Vegeta, Toucan Sham, and Joey Baby 69 and welcome back everyone to summer games done quick 2020 i am spike vegeta hope you enjoyed that run of the last of us and now we're about to go into i called it i'm going to use the same joke every time yesterday we had the castlevania and friends block today it is the sonic and friends block as we'll be kicking it off with Freedom Planet by Revolution pretty soon. And after that, we're going to be jumping into the classics where it all began. The original classic Sonic trilogy. And I'm joined now by the runners of Sonic 1 and 2. We got 2chan running Sonic 1 and Joey Baby 69 running Sonic 2. How are both of you doing today? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm on my lunch break right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing great. <laughs> So we got, yeah, we're giving you the reveal here, right? Pulling back the curtain, showing we're having lunch right now. We're having a good time. I got a couple questions here for each of you individually before we jump into some group questions. For 2chan, if I were to make a top 10 list of the most punishing games to speedrun, Sonic 1 would be included for sure. While you're running glitchless today and don't have to worry about the various zips in the game, it doesn't change the fact that you only have three lives across 18 stages, no spin dash unlike most of the rest of the series, and incredibly brutal level design. How confident are you going into today of nailing all you want to nail? Well, before I answer your question, uh, you made some comments about Sonic 1 that are very true. I just want to <laughs> kind of like, just really hammer that home. Um, so it is very brutal level, level design because the game is, it encourages you to go fast, but then you try to go fast and it kills you. And it's like, I thought we had a deal here. Yeah, uh, that's, that's so, Sonic 1 in a nutshell. Yeah. So the glitchless runs basically like circumventing all those things to play it the way that you were promised you could play it. Um, so it's, it's a really like rewarding speed run to pick up if you grew up playing Sonic. Um, but anyway, to answer your question, the top 10, like... Like, of all speed games? Are we talking, like, every speed game ever? Oh, just... oh everyone. Yeah, because no everyone. Lord knows. I have a database on all of them. I don't... Sonic 1 always seemed very brutal to me. Very hard to get into. I, th I think so. I think Sonic in general, like, um, if you're not doing the bonus stages, like, most people, when they're playing it casually, they're like, they hop into the bonus stage, and they get to continue. And it's like, you don't think anything of it. You die a bunch, you got to continue. 
you don't get continues in the speed run so much because you don't go to bonus stages. It wastes time. So uh, yeah, three lives is all you got. You know, better uh, better make good use of it or do something. Yeah. Yeah. As for the, the this is taking me forever to answer your question. Sorry, I'm very no no, no I love it. I time. love I love the detailed <laughs> stuff. This is great. <laughs> but um, as for like top ten most punishing, like I I can only speak toward like my experience with other speed games. Like I used to speed run Earthbound, for example. Oh, wow. Um and yeah, the RNG in that game is so punishing, you know, and like that's that's hard. I've tried Castlevania games, I've tried Super Metroid. Um I'm not ordering these here. I'm just kind of spitballing here, but yeah. Super Metroid I found very punishing. I I got a sub hour and I'm like, you know, I'm good. There are people who've got this. Um, you know, Donkey, I've mm. I've done that. Most punishing. I think the most punishing one I do is probably Final Fantasy VII because you fu- I'm sitting here acting like I know anything about speedrunning. You speedrun every game. I don't even know. Like what? Was- <laughs> was like, oh, I know she runs is, like Donkey like too. Like twenty RPGs. And all it's that. yeah. It's seven. Episode. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a long run, especially if you don't know what you're doing, like me. So it's gonna take you all day. You have to take off work. You have to do all that stuff, and <laughs> you'll probably still die at you know Demon's Gate. So what can you do? But I I think that's pretty punishing. Losing that much time and investment. Oh my gosh, we're here having an interview. I just want to have a podcast with Two Chain. Just be like, all right, let's let's break it down. What speed break game sucks down. the most? All right. Breaking down and rolling deep with two chan. I love it. We'll have an episode yeah, later on. Rolling deep. For uh for Joe Rolling Deep. For Joey, yeah, I love no- <laughs> I love nothing more in the community, Joey, than watching a good speedrun grind. Someone dedicating months and even years to climbing to the top of the mountain. Earlier this year, after losing dozens of runs to the final boss, you were able to take the world record in Sonic 2. Can you describe to me not only that moment of triumph? but the journey to get to that point. So like I started Sonic 2, I wouldn't say it's been a long time. I started sometime after AGDQ 2020. So that was like, what, six months ago? Mm -hmm. And I picked up Sonic 2 around February. So it's been like a five month grind, but it was a tough five months. Um, So yeah, there was a lot of uh, resources available. So I was able to pick everything, you know, learn the run as I go, as I went and, all of a sudden, I was on pace to get attempts to get a record. Um, but, you know, it's by the end game, we were talking about like Metropolis and Death Egg. That's oh. when it gets pretty difficult. Like one mistake and it's over. And Death Egg probably won the hardest, if not the hardest. Although I think uh, Lab 3 and Sonic 1 is harder. But Death Egg <laughs> and Death Sonic 2 is it's somewhere there. Um, you have no rings. Um, the f- absolute fastest fight in Death Egg is probably the most riskiest things you can go for. Uh-huh. And a death equates to 30 seconds. And it's uh-huh. it's happened multiple times. I've done this song and dance a hundred times and it's been brutal every time. So once it finally came together in one clean run, it was the best feeling ever. And it uh, I couldn't I couldn't express how... Uh, I have my run in, on YouTube somewhere and it's uh, I've expressed... Uh, absolute joy when it finally came together and uh, just like a few days after that I got Sonic 1 record uh, and I got the trilogy I got yeah and I got the the full trilogy sweep and glitched Sonic category for 1, 2 and S3K which was short lived but at least I can say I got at one point so yeah you did it you did it so uh, Connor to the top. I'm talking about one mountain. So many mountains. He's got an entire country's worth right there. <laughs> Have to take it back from my boy Super Boom fan, uh, who I knew for Crash Two speed running. All of a sudden, he's at oh, the yeah, top yeah. of Sonic. So I was like, where did this come from? He was he he's he's he was a uh, lurking in um, Zaxxon's chat. Um, also another great Sonic speeder, yep. and he's had records in one, two, and three as well before um, I I came into it to to the classics. But yeah, he he's been lurking and you know, he's you know learned a lot and he's just put some time into it and there you go. 
I got one final question for both of you. Great detailed answers. I love this sort of stuff in the interviews. And we're going to keep it lighthearted on this. For both of you, and we'll start okay. with two, Chan. Genesis okay. Sonic is where the blue blur started it all with great level design and a knack for high octane gameplay. But also for banger after banger and its amazing OSTs. What is the one track in each of these games that kept you going on the grind? Two, Chan, uh, what about you? One track. You know... Like, cause you hear Sonic one tracks enough times and you want to hear anything else. So like you put on, <laughs> you put on another Sonic game OST cause it's like, it gets you in the mood, but it's not Sonic one. Uh, I would say, I would say Sonic adventure soundtrack. Oh um, yeah. But like, uh, I don't know the names of them. I like, I don't, I don't know the, like I just fire on the album and it's like, I like that one that comes on 18 minutes. In. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whichever one is like, like at the beginning, you know, that, that's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's like five <laughs> people one, in chat yeah. going, I know that one. All right. Yeah. I like work out to that one. That's like, gets me <laughs> good. I'm glad I'm not the only one who works out to video game music. Oh, All right. We're nerds can, together. All right. Can I tell you this story real quickly? I was at the gym. I had that music going in my, uh, my, um, headphones right i'd like the wired headphones and uh -huh. i was going like doing like i think pull-ups or something and then like i had my phone on me and the head jack pulled out of my phone and i started playing <laughs> sonic adventure soundtrack at, like max volume in the gym and then everyone instantly knew how cool i was <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 crank that up, please. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, there's like, one buff yeah, dude really over in the corner going, Whoa. He's like, I can lift now. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Fire Doubles up. in power. And Joey, for you, what track keeps you going, my man? Uh, there's a lot. Uh, if, if I have to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my favorite and a runner-up because there's too much to count. Uh, absolute favorite in terms of a classic and, and everything all together has to be... Uh, Hydro CD Act 2 oh, yeah. in Sonic 3. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. That that is a absolute banger. I I I think I answered this question on a on a one stream once. Like I was just curious. And yeah, that was just my ultimate answer. If I have to give a runner up, it would be uh Metallic Man is two on Mania. Oh yeah. That 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 is a good track. Uh. The the Jack sound, man. You can't you can't compare it. You can't you can't compete with that. So many S tier tracks. And it says something that both of you did not pick tracks from the games we're playing today. Like, <laughs> give me anything else. I love it. Two Chan, Joey, two amazing speedrunners here for y'all today. Two Chan has run 45,000 different games at a high level. <laughs> Joey has conquered the top of the mountain in all of the Sonic trilogy, and they're ready to bring you a lot of great tracks and great level design and blazingly fast gameplay with their runs later today. Thank you both for joining me. Send you guys back up to the front for Freedom Planet by Revolution and more of Summer Games Done Quick 2020.